Hey guys! Good evening, Vampire Elich reporting in. Schedule is uh, so so all over the place. Meaning uh, late starts, late streams, random streams, and yeah. But we keep going. There's been some uh, information about the uh, Opium Patch 1.1 of Warhammer 3. We're gonna go over it. And after that, we'll uh, continue painting the world pink with the uh, Seducers of Slanesh. Where the hell did I put that link here? It's a developer diary, not patch notes, guys. Keep that in mind. Brace yourselves. I haven't uh, went over it, uh, so it's, uh, I want to do it on the stream. The Hopium patch. So, we got uh, we got some news here regarding the update, uh, which it's going to be pretty much the first patch for Warhammer 3. Uh, the other two don't really count, they're trying just to fix the game. So, this is a developer diary looking forward to update 1.1 and beyond, behind the scenes. Good day, commanders. We wanted to sidestep for a moment and talk uh, a little bit about our first major gameplay update coming early next month. Early next month. Oh boy. Well, uh, it's good to good to know dates. It's good to know dates because you know you can play and go play something else. It's like it's like 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 let's just say, guys, we got this is the uh, the roadmap, and as you can see. Immortal Empress is not going to come in another four or five months. Well, that's like amazing news. Now we can go play Battle Brothers for two months or, uh, you know, go play Witcher 3 or some shit like that. You know, you can, you know, the games you can have to play for weeks that, you know, you can play ahead. Uh, update 1.1. This is the first release to include a variety of fixes, gameplay balance changes and adjustment to mechanics that have been at the heart of discussion in the public space. So, two months to get a first patch for this game. Two months. This tells their list of unfinished game. So, today we are going to highlight some of these topics. Is this the... Uh, this feels like this is like the worst... ...delay to update of any Total War games. I don't think any of the previous Total War games I played needed two months to release a pr first patch. Makes you wonder what the fuck they're doing. They're working those three historical games. A new shooter game. Three Kingdoms 2. Or Three Kingdoms 4. I don't know anymore. Or maybe they are knee deep in DLC already. Clowns Assembly. So today we are going to highlight some of these topics. Provide some insight into our short term plans over here. At and took ahead uh, uh, to uh, our long term roadmap following the update. Four word, Dororot. For those of you looking for details about the combined Warhammer map Immortal Empires, uh, the Blood Pack, or any other DLC you are waiting to see added to the game, I'll note in advance that we won't be covering these subjects in a great depth or detail today. Okay. A little bit of disappointment already. So, Immortal Empires. We know uh, these are important topics uh, to many of you who have been asking about them. I mean, guys, what the fuck were they doing for four and a half years? Four and a half years, 2017, uh, was it September, release of Warhammer 2, a year and, f what, five months after Warhammer 1. And now it's been four years and, what, seven months, four years and seven months, we get Warhammer 3, they don't even have a proper release. It's uh, full of uh, uh, issues and it takes them two months to release a patch, not even two months to release Immortal Empires. Immortal Empires were released like a month after Warhammer 2. It looks like uh, they have been doing shit in all those years or somebody really done fucked it up. Somebody really fucked up good. We're getting more of that creative half assed assembly than ever before. When did they coin that term, creative half-assed assembly? I think it was with uh, 
in uh, tic-tac-toe update when they created a new type of deserts so they added a province below uh, the, uh, the great desert of Arabi it was a desert but it was not a desert you know like like you're immune to attrition but you're not immune to attrition so you have a desert and then you have another desert and uh, tomb kings or other factions that uh, have no issues with desert attrition would take attrition this new desert type of attrition seem like uh, they would create uh, you know deserts down there and they look like jungles and they turn into jungles and they look like deserts and uh, one of them is a desert but it looks like a jungle now and that's how uh, we got creative half fest assembly started and now we're getting more of it We know these are important topics to many of you who have been asking about them. Unfortunately, the timelines of these projects are currently in flux as we reprioritize our work to establish a strong foundation for the game upon which we can build. So, you know guys, this is what I never understand with these companies. It's like, we are going to release something and... Maybe people don't play more than 20 hours. Maybe they just give it 10 out of 10 rating. Maybe those critics give it a massive rating. And... Shh. Maybe nobody even plays the game like we do. Don't. And uh, nobody find all these issues, so we don't have to work about it, and we can go work on the new DLC and new games instead. Like, what the fuck were they expecting? It's like... It's like... It's like they're... Uh, so what is happening here? They want to see this. They want to see this, and they don't want to see this. They want this to be green too. And if they're both green, and everybody is just being a nice good boy, not complaining and bitching, eh, they don't have to put any extra work. They can just move on printing the DLC, making money. But, you know, when you get this, you know, who the fuck even listen to these jokes these days? And when you get this, it's like something is off. You're like thinking, hmm... There's something fishy going on here. Something fishy. Look at this. Guardian, 100 rating. 100. God damn. Did they play more than 8 hours? I don't know. It reminds me of that uh, thing, you know, when the companies create games and most uh, consumers are just gonna install it and play for maybe 10 hours and never even do the one achievement in the game or like a, to get a lot to rank 10. Uh, yes, yes, I want to play this. I had a f my fun 10 hours, so what's the next set Ubisoft game got released? No Call of Duty. Let's go play that. Then, you know, they bought a game, they were very happy in 10 hours, and they haven't even learned shit. And, you know, this is the type of consumers they want. They don't want people to complain and criticize their shit. Because then, you know, this is what happens. This one happens. Like, they have to reprioritize their work because they didn't expect this shitstorm, dark cloud they created with Warhammer 3. It's like they they got 86 from the critics. User score gave him 5.9. You know, I'm a generous person. I'm a little bit biased. They got low, over 7,000 hours in Warhammer 2, and I give them pff, six out of nine, 6.9, 6 6.9 out of 10. Okay. It's, you know, between mixed and liked, you know, like that movie watched and, and go to IMDb. It's like, ah, uh, man, I watched this movie, it's two hours later. I mean, I didn't quit in the middle. You know, there was some good parts of it and, you know, they were waiting for uh, something, you know, to happen. The whole movie, like watching the Tenet movie. And, you know, sure, I'm give it 7 out of 10. I've watched all of it, you know. Sometimes 8 out of 10, sure. Sure, I'll probably never watch it again. Maybe in 10 years once I forget about, you know, all the issues and why did I, you know... I don't want to rewatch things because you know all the new things suck, so you won't keep on rewatching stuff. And you know, it's not like we got stopped in the middle of the game to give it like 6 5 or even uh, not give it a proper review. It's like those, you know, little baby bitches complaining. Man, it's like they open the second round of this open, they quit the game, they didn't, even, they didn't even played it fully, and they're just coming to the, you know, giving rating 1 out of 10, or you know, complaining on Reddit, bitching about it. So. Can you even rate something you haven't really played it? Can you even rate a strategy game without trying to replay it? I don't think you can. So all of these guys are a fucking joke. Fucking joke. At least there's GameSpot here with 60. At least, at least GameSpot still has some credibility left. 
Warhammer 3 opens strongly, the narrative uh, hook of the prologue sinks deep, and thereafter tweaks to the strategic layer and tactical battles are welcome, but it can't sustain the early momentum. True that, after 100 hours the note was gone, and from that 9 out of 10, just like sliding down the hill with a rating. The endgame objectives feel like a distraction, even though they are our main point, and serve only to diminish the entire campaign. True that, true that. The factions all have different reasons for wanting the endgame. Uh, McGuffin, but none of those motivations make a difference to how the campaign plays out. Yeah, it's like some idiot uh, at Creative Assembly, what they done, like, oh man, I have never done a day of my work on Warhammer 2, we don't know what we did in all those years, but most of our people have played this for over four years now, and, you know, I mean, you need to give them something new. They can't play more of the same, and let's make every single faction do the same shit. You know, Rifts, Souls, survival bells it's like no matter if you're Kate, Kislev, Legion of Chaos, Nurgle or the Ogres let's do all make them do the same shit that's great for the play value and not least more Lampers for another half a year they have not learned anything from Iron Vortex when they you know create different objectives for the factions why not make the Legion of Chaos and the Kislev do the uh uh, Urson thing and the Realms of Chaos and the Souls. Let the Ogres have different agenda and objectives, could take different things, you know. One uh, faction could have been just purging Chaos, the other one has some kind of like sandbox agenda like the Ogres maybe. It's like the, the, fa the fact they tried to tie it uh, uh, to all the factions without any uh, really variety, and it feels like forced as fuck. Forced as fuck. It's like trying to create that, uh, you know, some kind of vegetable shit and it's, you know, all green mush instead of, you know, knowing which one is which. Everything is just feels so forced and you just have to swallow it and be happy about it because, you know, the critics have said so. You know, I'm... Uh I don't know. I don't. I don't really want to try too hard regarding uh, Real, uh, Realm of Chaos campaign. It's it's just like a wide vortex. Who cares? We're gonna play a couple of those campaigns, and we're gonna be uh, playing the Mortal Empires, right? Who cares? But 80% of the budget probably went to that, and it makes me sad, cry, you know, angry and frustrated. And then we get Mortal Empires, Mortal Empires, and we gotta deal with the half assing and the three, four years of patching. So you have to care. Even if you don't like it, even if you hate it, you have to care because they done fucked it up again and they're forcing the shit here in a game that doesn't really want to be a narrative game, they want to be a sandbox game. Why can't they just focus on a world map and build uh, build upon this? Like, you know, Paradox, you know, have a world and just, you know, make it more. Update it, polish it, fill in the gaps, colors, factions, more, 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 more. Not multiple campaigns and ridiculous uh, effort put into some experience that uh, nobody even asked for. Maybe a minority of 15% player base. If you don't brace yourself for these mini campaigns, you're always gonna get disappointed. And I learned this with Rome 2, guys. I learned this with Rome 2, and I wanna show you what I mean by this. You know, no emote spam here, please. But I wanna show you what I mean with this. Everybody who played the Rome 2, they learned this and they braced themselves for disappointment with this company. Because they have this weird agenda and shit, which, you know, maybe a couple of guys at the company care. They don't really want to just... So, like somebody at some point in history said, uh, Creative Assembly makes all these games, they look all the same, just different setting. All Total War games are the same. And they took it to heart. They took it to heart. And uh, they try to create uh, games that are different, even if different is worse. And it's the same shit with this DLC, free DLC agenda they have. They just pretend, really. Look, this is ROM 2, look at this. That is a prologue. Yes, prologue. There's a grand campaign. Imperator Goose's campaign, Emperor Divided campaign, Rise of the Republic campaign, Seven Gold campaign, Humble Guest campaign, campaign, What the fuck? Why not just fix one fucking campaign instead of making all these broken campaigns? No one of them is even half fixed. You like to have modders create a campaign to, you know, merge all these campaigns to actually get one proper campaign. Fucking clowns, what they are. Look at this shit. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight fucking campaigns. If you put all this into one campaign, you actually get a one decent campaign. Learn nothing. They said they're done doing this many campaigns, and in Warhammer 3, they make like the highest quality questionable Total War campaign update. It took more than a couple of years to actually uh, merge some of this shit into one good campaign. But it's not the worst part, you know, all these things that are done with Warhammer 2 is like just went poof. Like, huh? We have played Call of the Beastman campaign once, we played the uh, Wood Elf campaign once. Luckily, no, we have five head here and we've win it on the first try. No, we don't fuck it up. And we never had to play that campaign again. It's like, what the fuck is all that wasted resource and effort making this many campaigns? Somebody has a stick up their ass and they're just like, we need more narrative, we need more mini campaigns, we need more girls playing this game, girls like stories. Well, I don't know what, maybe it's not that, maybe they just need more casuals. Well, casuals like FPS game CA, work on that FPS game, put it on console, you get some sales, maybe you get some teen audience. Don't try to fuck up Total War games because they shit. I don't know man, it's all a fucking mess with this. It's like, Iron Vortex initially was good, you know, it's like, there are parts I like from it, I like it, I like the shape of the contents, size of the map, but you know, the way they've done it and the way the Model Empress was delivered, it's like, made me hate it, you know, hate it, and it's nothing is gonna change my mind, I'm not even gonna praise it uh, in the areas where it's good, I'm just gonna fucking hate it, just because the way they've done it, and they created the same shit here. Except I've, uh, you know, had this experience with Warhammer 2, and now I know in Warhammer 3 different. So, I guess I'm like one of those, you know. Elish, why are you liking this game? It's fucking dog shit. But you know, I played Warhammer 2 for 7,000 hours, and Warhammer 3 is fucking refreshing to me, even if it's just a dog shit mini campaign. You know? To me, it's, you know, refreshing. People just got spoiled and uh, they more, want more, more em, Mortal Empires and CA didn't want to build Mortal Empires because people have been playing Mortal Empires for 4 years. So, what does he say that when the developer becomes, uh, you know what Blizzard become in the, last, in the last few years? Detached from reality or uh, from what the players want? What's that, what do they call that thing? Out of touch, out of touch with their player base, exactly. So this feels like a combination of out of touch with uh, uh, the players, which have all really wanted just one big map and, uh, and a world that uh, you know works, bells that matter, and not really something that they. they it's like I said, a combination out of touch and then trying to deliver a new experience, because you know, guys, they played more members for years. They don't want another Mole Empress immediately. They need something like, you know, some kind of single player campaign, which actual campaign single player and doesn't have a replay value. So what we get, we get Prologue, we got Prologue Deluxe. And even that got half-assed. So the fact that it has issues would make things everything worse. They just feel like they're out of touch. Why does all happen with these companies? They become biggest in Europe, uh, biggest in I don't know where, and uh, always shit like this happens. This campaign felt nice, you know, for the first, uh, you know, from the uh, novelty part of things, but once you uh, go in and see, it's just, you know, weird. This really triggers me, guys, this, this this part here. We know this is an important topic, so many of you have been asking about them. Unfortunately, the timelines of these projects are currently in flux. What the fuck would they mean in flux? Four and a half years of uh, Warhammer 2 3 development. In flux. As we reprioritize our work to establish a strong foundation for the game upon which we can build. This basically means they released an unfinished game. What else can this mean? We have released unfinished game 
it received uh, bad uh, what is it uh, it was received badly and now we have to fix shit and we can't do anything else this 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 is just like the finished uh, the released unfinished game and they charge full price of it they didn't even had the balls to put early access tag on it and they released the game, this game like one month one month to content creators and influencers and the youtubers for one month and they, they forbid them for like three weeks three and a half weeks to say anything bad about it you know like NDH stuff, stuff you know you're not supposed to say anything bad about it like legend was avoiding the the realm of souls again because you know he would probably just complain about it because this is not more empires this is not what he wanted a whole month with, the, uh, with these people and they uh, receive zero feedback they just pretend a bunch of pretenders we prioritize our work to establish a strong foundation for the game upon which we can build which means they build shit right now disgusting when I read this shit here, I don't even want to start third campaign. A four word. Fucking ominous here. Biblical proportion ominous. Somebody's about to die, you know. Maybe even, uh, you know, like that guy uh, probably doesn't even work at the Creative Assembly anymore. What's that? What's that? Uh, 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 you know what I'm talking about? That their, uh, their uh, AI, AI uh, guy. The, uh... Angry Joe crucified on uh, his review in the Rome 2 review. The, the game needs to be in a solid place before we consider adding new content and features to the mix. So we are in the process of reviewing the release time of Border Mortal Empress and the Blood Pack. Holy shit. Man, I hope they didn't put these rifts in the realm of uh, chaos assets into uh, into more empires. I'm like, oh oh, oh oh, back to the drawing board. Cut all that shit from the game. We need another six months. Goddamn. Oh oh. When we know more, we'll take the time to spotlight the cool new content we have planned at that time. Until then, rest assured that we'll share what we know as soon as we have more great timeline in place. God damn. Basically, guys, uh, come for me who actually, you know, been, uh, you know, someone enjoying this experience of what, 270 hours so far. Finish your campaigns, boys, and wait for the patch. And then maybe play one more campaign and then just wait for the Model Empires. No, maybe check that Elden Ring game. Play a more Skyrim. Or whatever your, you know, Witcher 3 played or something like that. Page 1.1 1 .1, uh, preview. Here we go. Update 1.1 is the first of our large updates to the game. Currently uh, slated for early next month. So two months to get an update for the game. Two months. Guys, you know, I'm, I, I tend to get depressed from time to time. Either because of my lifestyle or because, you know, things I have not passion about, uh, you know, the, the, the gods are not really passionate about the same way. And... When they released that game, what was it called? Uh, buh, buh, something. Mountain Blade. Be Bannerlord. Bannerlord. I kid you fucking not, in seven days of the game, I think it was like six to eight patches. In seven fucking days of the game. And every day, I'm like, I'm like, open my Steam. And then there's green light on the top right. Green light, somebody send me a message. Oh boy. <sighs> am I gonna just enjoy my coffee or am I gonna have to open the bottle? Is this another corrupted save message? And no, it was even worse. Ben Lord getting patched. Day one, day two, day three, day four. I swear there might have been eight patches in seven days. It was fucking depressing. It was fucking depressing. This is what, you know, my life turned to be. Games getting released, they're getting patched on day fucking one, day two, day three, day four, and I'm getting depressed. This is what this, uh, the CF has done to me. 
two months and we don't even get a single patch. That patch 101 and 102, that's fucking dog shit. Made things even worse. Maybe just some fix for multiplayer, but who cares? Small minority plays multiplayer. It's depressing. Depressing. And at least I wanted the reason why I drink sometimes. Okay. So now they take uh, the feedback, huh? Here we go. Update 1.1 is the first of our large updates to the game, currently slated for early next month. And build uh, will introduce a swatch. A swatch of changes. I, I, I don't know this word. Google, what is swatch? Swatch define. Uh, not even Google knows. Not even Google knows it's a watch. What the hell is a swatch? I have, I don't know. Swatch. Is it a typo? Swat? Okay, swat, uh, sort of changes. Okay. Sorry guys, English is not my first language, although it's, uh, you know, taking over my first language. Sometimes they use these weird words and you never know, because, you know, sometimes you get uh, a war bar. And you're like wondering what the fuck it is. Uh, design improvements, gameplay fix and fundamental changes prioritized and based on the feedback we have seen since launch. So nothing was seen uh, on, nothing really, they have seen no feedback before launch. One month of fucking early access and current creators are playing the games for tens of thousands of hours. Zero feedback. Here are some of those changes. Maybe somebody did, uh, you know, given them to devs, those community managers, you know, they'd given them to devs and devs are like, forgot it's somewhere under a pile of paper or, you know, in the spam folder of the email. It's possible. It's possible. Let me just drink some water here. Realm of Chaos. So this is pretty much the uh, the number one complaint uh, in the game. Realm of Chaos. The rifts. The pressure that someone is eating souls. The, pre the realm of uh, Zinch. People have probably lost hair there. Or whatever hair they have left. I don't know. I've been in the realm of Zinch twice. And you know. I pay attention. I pay attention. I use this thing in my head called brain. And you know, it feels pressure. I felt pressured, especially in the Kizzle campaign. I felt stress in that campaign. But uh, two times in the realm Zinch, two times successful. So, I don't know, people I feel like didn't even try in that realm. They didn't even try. So, this thing, you know, is causing problems for the players, uh, obviously. Like, Realm of Corn is a fucking joke. Realm of Zinch is like... Oh, shit! What are you putting gimmicks in my strategy game? Oh, no, 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 no. I don't want no gimmicks in my strategy game. I want to just recruit uh, Doomstick. Control A, right click on the enemy. Don't, no, don't put gimmicks in my strategy games. I'm already learning enough this shit. I'm a veteran of Total War series. God damn it, I want to learn anything new. So, yeah. I feel like uh, Realm of Zinch uh, traumatized people and there's a lot of complaints coming from that as well. It is unfair. I agree with that. The Realm of Zinch is unfair. I might have gotten lucky, who knows, but uh, not everybody has a five head. Sometimes, you know, uh, four head is best to get and there's a lots of three head out there. So, you're not having patience, you're not thinking, you're not taking your time. And there are gimmicks involved. Oh you're gonna get frustrated. If you don't have patience for strategy games, don't, don't play strategy games. Play something else. Try the new Call of Duty. Fortnite got uh, Doctor Who update. You know, it's all the rage with the kids. Okay, let's see. Let's see what they've done. So, this is what they've done. Gameplay tweaks. The strength of the negative realm traits have been reduced by roughly 15%. Honestly, uh... F 
I don't know. Sure. Let's make uh, the Realm of Chaos even less uh, uh, meaningful or, uh, you know, it's not like it's a hell of chaos. But sure, people complain about this, why not? Who cares? Who cares? I, I really don't care. Some of those things are punishing, but it's only my head. Elich, god damn, you know, I don't want to lose a single fucking war bear right in my army. I have to spend three turns and help it remove those traits, because, you know, I would have had to finish that survival battle with at least 40 casualties instead of 33 or 25. It's really just OCD in me that needs to clear those things, and those things really don't do anything. Even the Nurgle ones in the big picture. Have a strong army, who cares? But uh, the problem is, the Chaos guys getting those traits where they're in their realms, it makes no sense. This is, I feel like, uh, this first one is more about OCD and having something negative with you stuck for the rest of the game. And not much more than that. Because if you create an army, especially a above average army or a quality army, you have to be a fucking Pepega for this to be anything uh, negative to the army to affect you in the battle. It's just that thing like in your back of your mind, I have something negative on my uh, on my lord and I don't want anything negative. You know, it bothers me. I need to clear it. I don't want to get it. It's more dead than anything else, I think. So, I don't know. This feels like they're just trying to please the, the crowd uh, that's bitching about these traits. Demon Legend and Lords will no longer be burdened by negative traits of their respective pattern god. Man, I was asking too much for this to be in the game since day one. Enter a uh, Slanesh Realm with Nakari, the Arch Tempter, or Tempter, depending which uh, part of the game you read it. And he gets, uh, you know, bad trade for Slanesh. Because we got it. It's like, uh, asking too much to not see this on day one, but guys. In this day and age, years later, in Warhammer 1, the random dog shit trade system they find, uh, replaced, thankfully, to Bretonia Update and Warhammer 2. Uh, sometimes you would confederate Gringor and he would have this trait called Benevolent. You know, it's kind of like he's kind, kind ruler, he loves his people. You know, he doesn't start wars doesn't, you know, execute the, uh, uh, the newspaper guys when they post something on Reddit, on Twitter, and, you know, he's just a kind guy. So, blanket changes. Everybody gets affected. Copy pasta. You can have a benevolent ruler in the Empire, you can have a benevolent ruler in the Greenskins. It's just lazy. And this is also was lazy as well. Nobody cared enough to, for the shit to make sense. I don't care if there's punishing uh, things in the game or frustrating, uh, challenging gameplay. I want things to make sense more than anything. Traits gain in the realm of chaos will not be removed when a legend of the lord completes a survival battle with the, within that realm. Like, why? Why? Like, what is this? They're fucking... <laughs> they're just pleasing Reddit here. Like, what the fuck is this? What the fuck is the point of... What? Like, what the hell? Just remove those traits from the game in the first place. Like, this shit makes no sense anymore. Like, this shit makes no sense. Now we... Uh, kids of the Space Marines for sure. Is the Reddit really that bad? With the... Uh, with complaining with Warhammer 3? I tried to avoid most of it. Some I got a couple of links and I upvoted some shit and downvoted some shit. Like, what the hell, man? This shit makes no sense. The traits are not the problem, those survival battles uh, seem to be more problem than actual traits. Because they're fucking uh, boring. Journalist difficulty. Click buttons, you can't lose. Like I said, these traits are just a thing in back of your mind that's just bothering you. And it's like... It's some kind of... Uh, I don't know, it's... 
It prevents you from enjoying your game. It's like it's a, like a mental issue. I have it as well. I have it as well, so I understand. Those, most of those traits are dog shit. Like, uh, Slanesh guy gets corrupted by corn. Who gives a shit? Some areas is actually a buff. Minus uh, control and leadership order size. Oh no. Like what? And now... I don't really get it. Like what's, what's 10 times worse is that corrupt Benurgle. That's like 10 times worse than any of this shit. When a player intercepts an AI Lord at the Forge of Souls, their souls will now be lost. Uh, we've never gotten into this position. Both campaigns I've done, my first campaign I scored, which we were behind. We have uh, uh, won by, like, I don't know, turn 160 or so with a Realm uh, uh, Forge of Souls victory. And my second campaign, uh, we won on like turn 134. Uh, we're just playing more. So, I, I don't know what they're talking about here. Intercept, is it like uh, Vortex? Some, somebody has any information about this? When, uh, in Iod Vortex, when somebody unlocks the final battle, you have five turns to intercept them. And of course, there are Pepegas around there who's like, end turn, end turn, end turn, defeat screen. What? They forgot about the battle. So... They have five turns of this quest type battle, which is impossible to lose because the, they give you I win buttons. So you have to be a fucking Pepega or have Skaven Slave Army to lose. And here, I don't know. When a player intercepts an Air Lord of Fortress Souls, what does this mean? You get a quest battle? If you don't do it, you lose the campaign. I get a message the AI unlock battle and advisor says he can uh, use the book to get me to Fortress Souls, but I couldn't figure it out. Cookie says you need to go to Fortress Souls and wait for enemy to arrive, which he may not for turns on end, and uh, then defeat his army and does delay defeat by fitness chance. Okay, so basically somebody gets four souls, Fortress Souls area gets unlocked for everybody. But only uh, the one who has the four souls can do the battle. They need to spend a whole turn to get in, and then from that rift, click on the quest battles to finish the campaign. But you have to enter that place and wait for them to, for them to arrive before they arrive, and defeat them before they do the battle. Is that what it is? And if they, if you are there, the AI sees you there because they have no fog of war, and they might not ever arrive, which means your main army is going to be brick there forever. And if you are there, you can get new souls, so you can actually finish the normal uh, campaign. Just delaying them. Uh, just imagine guys, just imagine Legion of Chaos has the Realm of Souls uh, objective Realm of Chaos objective, Realm of Souls is uh, Tomb King's thing So Legion of Chaos has the Realm of uh, Chaos objective thing, they need to get souls uh, You know, whatever, whatever, because you know, prologue, nation, narrative Keys of the factions have it as well And they're the main competitors for this thing The other factions, you know, have their own thing You know, Kate, I don't know, Re make Kate great again uh, repel chaos, destroy chaos, but they're in a hell that never ends. Ogres, you know, they can work for each side, help uh, either of the sides do their own thing. And how do how different this objective would even feel? You can either uh, decide as a Legion of Chaos to take over Kislev and as Kislev to take over the Legion of Chaos, and then you don't even have to do uh, bother with this. This is, a, this is a core issue that has been a core issue in uh, Total War games since forever. Like, one of the worst objectives in the game probably was Rome 2. One of the best was probably Age of Charlemagne. It's the, the objectives on the campaign. It's like they just suck. The same guy is making all this shit and he just sucks at his job. They need to be a different 
ways to uh, you know progress in the campaign finish campaign finish campaigns at the various stages they can attach to various bonuses buffs that unlocked as you progress with the campaign and not just you know play for the victory screen and when you get it into a uh, state of mind when then you just start a campaign some early uh, stress pressure hill to climb and then it's just you know a check mark for the victory screen and this is because they create this problem with the objectives and they fucking suck and they have not really tried to fix this why can't we have a multi-tier uh, domination victory that just progress with the game as you complete objectives in the game, destroy various factions, unlock various buffs for your faction or different things in the game? But no, they just like... They give you a normal campaign, what they think, you know, should be a normal campaign and then they just give you extreme version of the campaign which is like some kind of arbitrary uh, domination objective. And this is a, a problem with, uh, you know, a lot of play styles, I feel, and... People, I, I, I think people are sick of just restarting campaigns. They play, they start a campaign and they play 30, 40, 50 turns and they just get like, okay, I've been there, I've been here, and I know what's gonna happen next. And you know, we could be just doing late game with this faction or try to do something, you know, different. But you know, and they're like, tomorrow they forget about it and they want to start a new campaign. They always get to the same po point in the campaign and the game doesn't offer anything new, different ways to play. And when they create shit like this, they make it like 10 times worse. Why, they, why didn't they just uh, create a proper objectives for the campaign and uh, attach some kind of incentive and rewards to do them? Do them differently. Different uh, directions in the campaign. Now, even if the early game might uh, pretty be much the same, why not uh, uh, arc from somewhere else, you know, branch into different uh, stages of the game? create something uh, different and I, I feel like uh, if there is just an agenda for uh, uh, Realm of Chaos and uh, the AI is doing it at the same time I, I feel like uh, this 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 uh, domination thing they've created uh, doesn't even fit because domination is just a continuation of uh, Realm of uh, Chaos uh, campaign, part of the campaign and it continuing at a stage of the game where I probably over 80% of the player base has never even been to, let alone enjoys this part of the campaign. And they uh, give you uh, Richard Armitage, who has amazing uh, voice, uh, creates one of, the more, one of the most important characters in Warhammer Universe as a reward for completing this. And most people at that point were just gonna quit the game. But you get this guy, which you can't even use in a new campaign, you get him when the worst is over. And what do we do now? We start a new campaign. In like eight, seven out of eight, seven to eight out of ten players are gonna do that. And this guy is very powerful. Literally created a one demon army. And I find it fun to use in my slash campaign. Like what the fuck is he doing in my kisses campaign? I don't know. I don't even know see and knows, but he's there too. I guess Lord of Shadows is okay to have with, uh, you know, Kizzle, it's just a little silly old power right now. So, if the game doesn't branch into, into different uh, areas as it progresses, then just more of the same. What is the point of this narrative? And if every faction has the same thing, it's like, these guys have fucking college degrees and years of experience, they're fucking professionals, I'm just a vulnerable professional here. Like, I don't know how they don't see it. It's like they're just deceiving their customers and they're trying to get uh, their money because uh, they're gonna know they're just gonna play for 10 to 15 hours and never play the game again. But they build their game on a core community that replaces their game. It puts hundreds and thousands of hours in their game. And this is a fucking uh, deception what they've created. It's disgusting. And just more of the same but worse. More the same, but worse, and they, they, then they're shocked when the people complain, and they now have to reprioritize their shit. We've been deceived. You guys have been deceived. I expected shit. I expected the Iron Vortex. You have been deceived. I breast myself. When a player intercepts an airlord of the Fortress Souls, the souls will now be lost, forcing them to restart the collection. 
they should make it easier to disturb the souls race. So hold on. Those guys get four souls. They got four souls, and they get four souls, and you beat them up if they even arrive. And they lose all their four souls, and now they think people are gonna play another third turns, and another third turns, and another third turns, and they're gonna get again four souls. Who the fuck is gonna play campaign for 300 turns? So they have to do it all over again. Man, they get sending AI in some kind of hell. Why is the AI even fucking prioritizing this shit? So this gives like false impression that the AI is living in a world where building an empire matters. Because if they are busy doing realms of chaos in some kind of fifth circle of hell, and there's certainly no point to it, I think it's just going to diminish the experience of the game we want. I don't know. It, it feels like crippled either way. It's like I am in this campaign right now. I, I'm gonna load it to you guys so you can see. Uh, 25 seconds, hold on. I'm in this campaign right now where I have unlocked Belakor. I have defeated the Shadow Legion. But uh, what is happening? You're going to see what the fuck is happening. I have destroyed Goldtooth, and he's their primary, primary contender for the Realm of Souls mechanic. And like, uh, let me show you what is happening, cause uh, this is the things you guys don't want to know. This is the things on the fucking hood, post game, and this type of things we just kind of spoil, spoil some kind of any willpower to continue playing this game. So you've been warned. You've been warned when you're gonna see this shit. It, they've created some kind of vicious cycle that just diminishes any experience that is not part of the original 4-5 or five rounds of the Realm of Chaos getting Demon Souls and doing those uh, tedious battles which just you can lose. So look at this. It's turn 55. Uh, it's been 21 turns since we unlocked uh, the Belakor. Belakor. And... Uh, We've been continuing towards the mission out, because what happened some uh, times early in this campaign. We destroyed Goldtooth, and look at this, what happened. Disciples of the Maw, all of a sudden, became a player in the Demon Prince Souls game. Zero resistance and pressure in this area now. They literally stopped fighting uh, the Empire. They stop actually uh, being a superpower bothering other factions. They become some kind of pawn in the game. And instead of being a faction that seems like to turning something into superpower, ignoring this uh, game, this is why this faction is one of the strongest in the game. They've entered Realm of, Sl uh, realm of uh, Slanesh, they got the soul. On the same portals, they're now also in the Realm of Corn. Look at this. It's done. It's gone. The Forger Souls. Is gone. Belakor is no longer plotting. He's been punished by Zinj. He's fighting for Slanesh now. That's done. Final battle complete. And what is the AI doing? The legendary lords, the most, most powerful fucking armies, they are still in the realm of chaos getting souls. I don't know who at the CA has even allowed this shit to happen post four souls which means they are not on the campaign map they are not creating an opposition for their neighbors creating a large empire having a strong army have a chance in the late game of the campaign it's fucking trivial they care more about these souls than what's gonna happen to the, 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 the whole empire Zhao Ming and Miao Ying are fighting each other killing each other this whole campaign but uh, hold on, hold on. Time out, time out. I gotta go into the realm of chaos. I gotta get that soul. Doesn't matter that the faction has already got all the same souls, has already gotten the Urson, uh, you know, whatever, eat it, uh, you know, take his corpse, free him. No, no, we still have to go there. We are instructed. And so, my factions might be lobotomized, but the major factions are also lobotomized. They are also lobotomized because they have to go into the realm of chaos and they have to keep doing this shit all over again. We are uh, playing for the domination stage of the game, but the stage by the developer has not been set 
and this is just one big fucking line that doesn't even exist in the game. It's like one of those things uh, when you play in a RPG games in like uh, make believe, you know. It says here domination campaign. It says this you have to do this the dead, but uh, it's just all in your head. You have to use your imagination to make this work, because the game is not programmed for this shit. It's all that's been programmed for Forge of Souls campaign victory, and don't get yourself fooled. It's only this and nothing else. And that's the, you know, main issue with uh, everybody. We know it now under the hood as well. We've seen the AI behave and it's fucked. It's for this, but Realm of Chaos campaign, I don't give a shit. I don't even want this shit to be improved. I'm just gonna do my achievements and never play this shit again. More Lampars, you know, best is yet to come. We just got Batman Begins, Dark Knight is in the works. Stay patient. What else is there? We are derailing this shit hard. Uh, the protection uh, building uh, chain can now be used to prevent rifts from spawning in the province in which they are built. Protection building chain. So I'm guessing uh, they removed this uh, thing from the main building. Chains are removing a train game from visiting normal skills by 50%, guys and lords. They removed the same text from the protection building. So, this is how you move the guarantee 100%. You can plan ahead of time and move in one turn. So, I guess uh, if you build this thing here, uh, the rift will not be, op be open in the region. So, yeah. I don't know, guys, you know, I, I, mean, I should not really be caring about this realm of chaos or what, but to me, this all seems like. Uh, uh, they just want to wipe the tears of Reddit. Those babies complaining. I feel like this is just missing the point. I think I think most of those people, they don't really want to play this uh, rifts and realm of chaos, and the CA doesn't see it. It's like they just they're just trying to make this a little bit less, so they deceive uh, players again. And they're gonna get all these fucking changes, and they're gonna start a new campaign. Rifts is gonna open. Oh shit. There are all the three factions in the realm of souls while I'm uh, sieging help it. Oh man, what am I gonna do? Oh shit. Uh, there goes the first soul. There goes another soul. There goes another soul. Oh man, I'm gonna enter the realm of souls. Oh shit, I'm four turns behind. Oh no, I'm gonna have to wait another third turns to catch up. And then another third turns, another third turns, another third turns. And you know, 150 turns later, you know, we might just start a new campaign. They're just gonna see what it is. It's going to be just the same shit. This is not gonna do anything. The rewards for gaining souls have been improved by providing additional bonuses for a limited period of time. Well, that's a good thing. You know, as like I said, if you capture uh, one of these souls, you should get a permanent bonus for the faction. Temporary? Sure, why not? But this is just more of the same shit, you know. Uh, I don't think they, they, they see the point of all this complaining. People don't really complain about some of this stuff here. This is all just they're making things worse. The problem is that uh, they have to do this shit. People don't like rifts. People don't like uh, Realm of Chaos uh, stuff. And uh, people don't like uh, Sword Bells. I think that's what it is. I even if it's like 5, 6 or 7 out of this, or 10 of these people, it's still the majority. We're going to get a patch and uh, it's going to be the same thing again for them. They're either going to have to just swallow it and uh, go with this or ignore it. This is just... Uh, I don't know. This is not going to cause save any any of the shit with... Uh, any of the shit with uh, what people are complaining about. These changes are intended to make the Souls race less urgent and give you the chance to approach the battlefield in different ways. Less urgent. So... Let's say you're playing the game and you're trying to complete the campaign. As in, get a victory screen for, I don't know, closure or, you know, for some kind of uh, lifetime achievement or, you know, Steam achievement. And let's say, oh man, I'm not gonna bother with this, I'm gonna play this as a total war. 36 turns later and you have no souls. Because, you know, it's hard to get your lord doing it for 15 turns of those turns. And uh, I'm like, oh man, I don't have any souls. Factions are getting more souls. 
Who am I going to have to go there? I'm gonna have to do Legion of Chaos, Oracles of Zinj, sub uh, known provinces, they all have souls. I'm gonna, gonna spend the rest of my life outside the Forder Souls. How am I gonna finish this campaign? How am I gonna finish this campaign? It's gonna be another 30, 60, 90 turns later. Holy shit, I only put half my life in this campaign. Can't take it anymore. And how am I gonna finish it? You know, I can't finish this because I, you know, have to be there. And I'm gonna need to get souls under 30, 60, 90, 120 turns. Heck, it's only turn 400. Heck, I have two souls now, I can do it. And what's the alternative? The start of the faction to get 5 provinces. Do they even put any thought in this? Because I'm not talking about us guys. I'm not talking about us guys that have to copy him every day. I'm talking about your usual be be Pegas. Your Reddit uh, users that spend more time on Reddit playing the game. Talking about uh, the casuals, you know, the 70% player base. I think this is just uh, created impossible for them. And I feel like, uh, am I the only one to see the picture here? It's just more stress and pressure. Because they just make, they just really want this to be the uh, the constant of the campaign, and they really want anything else. Because guys, I don't want to give you sandbox experience. You might delay this a bit, but this is the campaign, okay, player? This is how we made it. This is where we spent all our money at. This is how we're gonna have to do it. No, you have to do this. You know, if we change it. To be more like moral empires, it's it's the point of being a narrative uh, mini campaign. And by delaying something by 30, 60 turns, what is the agenda, goal of this? Quit. Always quit. Never finish. It's like, what the hell is the point of it? And uh, the fact as you expand, you make it longer and harder for yourself. Those 30, 60 turns are gonna take 10 times longer. I don't think they think about these things. You know, I, I don't really mind managing an empire. But sometimes, uh, for, uh, you know, these casuals, managing empire is like watching the paint dry on the wall. You know, or uh, spider stains, because there's nothing be better on Twitch. Longer and harder, yeah. Longer and harder. Less urgent. But if they make the souls less, less urgent, what is the point of it? Don't they understand how it works? What do you mean? I'm gonna skip one round, two rounds, three rounds? How am I gonna finish this campaign? Domination campaign is uh, ridiculous. So what, what, is the, what is the point of this? Less urgent. They're softening all these blows, giving an illusion like there's gonna be something different than the same thing. This is just... Uh, this is nothing. This is nothing. NOTHING! What they should have done if they should have made the ogres and the Kate play differently. But guys, we made all those cinematics. The voice actors, we paid them thousands and thousands of dollars. Hopefully not tens of thousands of dollars. We can't just remove that. This is the game. Don't play it, don't learn, uh, wait for the more lampers. God damn. So guys, just think about it. They spend hundreds of thousands of dollars, no doubt, on these voice actors. Probably cinematics. It's like, we can't discard all that to give people what they want. We can't. We want. They will play it or they will not play it. Fuck them. And this is probably where they're at. And this is where we get all this shit here and any relevant, instead of any relevant changes. They done fucked it up and they don't want to discard all that shit they done to make it better. Because it's too much work and it would just discard, I guess, you know, just think about it like this. Imagine they discard all those shitty cinematics and uh, voice acting and whatever they done, like the I had the Vortex stuff, to give some kind of narrative experience, whatever, whatever. And just imagine now they do Kate instead of, you know, the going for souls. Objective of Kate is to, I don't know, 
destroy uh, destroy Zinch and Nurgle factions and control all of Kate. You know, save Kate from incursions, make Kate great again. Some kind of resource mechanic could be done with it, some more depth to the campaign and not just, you know, some big world agenda that they need to, you know, rule the world or, you know, save the world. And what do they have to do with this? They have to discard all the cinematics they've done with it. They have to discard all the audio they recorded for it. And they have to do something else. They will not be able to match the quality of those cinematics or audio already done. Because it's already done. So they have, would have to discard it. And then half ass it into the game. With uh, much less premium quality the other factions have. And it would just be simply unacceptable to make a change on such a scale and not deliver it at the same premium quality of cinematics and audio attached with everything goes with it like the rest of the game slash factions that are supposed to be as the part of the main game. So instead of giving shit that, you know, would make the game better, the game make more sense, they just gonna go along with it with the same shit every faction has to do and uh, it's just gonna a little bit uh, like line of text here, line of text there and you know, stop bitching around, play the game so they just can't do it, it's already done we won't do it we have already half assed the Mortal Empires all the shit there is out the cinematics, extra voice acting and all the shit there where all this shit is gonna go, the good stuff we can't make you know, a good Kate campaign. Gotta go for the souls, man. Gotta go for the souls. Maintain Red Bastion, get all the deserts and the savannah, and, you know, play the game. First time, it's gonna be good. If you play it as a third or fourth campaign, it might not be good, but that's what they made. We have invested uh, hundreds and thousands of euros, dollars, pounds, maybe even a couple of millions, and we can't just discard this to make it better. Because we can't make this new better on the same level of quality of the design we've done the rest of the faction. Like when it matters for Legion of Chaos or Kislev. Like in matters for Kislev, matters for Legion of Chaos to have this because, you know, continues with the narrative. You know, we wanted to see this. But for the factions, they just went with a lazy copy pasta with the same tier of quality and uh, of the cinematic and the delivery of the audio, right? So they just can't remove it. You're gonna get this shit in the Immortal Empires. That's why the Immortal Empires is gonna be better. All these crazy ideas you guys are gonna give them, uh, it's gonna end up in Immortal Empires. Immortal Empires might be in 2019, but, uh, you know, once at least in 2035, uh, they'll have uh, endless years to patch it. Until they release the next game and abandon it like every other game they have you know, released. So, probably about three years uh, to fix the game. Less urgent. Man, guys, uh, my fucking blood pressure is out the roof when I see this less urgent and when I see this thing reprioritize. And when you have the spaghetti code revealed, you know, the meme. It's not really the spaghetti code, but yeah. Holy fuck. Supply lines. A prevalent issue reported by the community, a fix to address the bug where the upkeep cost of the supply lines mechanic would fall, fail to update of disbanding and armies will be included in update 1.1, two months later, or something so critical as the game economy. And Kizzle like, gets no economy if you play above, uh, uh, above normal. I think it's above normal. Yeah, who cares? Can you guys imagine, you know, these people uh, playing, testing the game, and, and nobody even noticed this? We play the game for fucking few hours, we notice the bug. On day one. Shame on all those influencers, content creators and uh, YouTubers. They don't even pay attention anymore. What the fuck are they just there? Refer a link to, you know, to buy Warhammer 3 to them or what? Hype and marketing. It's what it is. Hype and marketing. It's all a fucking joke. For developers that pretend to care just to get free marketing. How the fuck they release the game with the broken supply lines? Fucking bunch of pretenders. Both the, the uh, creative assembly, Sega and the uh, these content creators. 
fucking pretenders. Yes, man. Yes. Fucking day one, something off with our money. Infantry responsiveness. Another noteworthy topic is how infantry units uh, turn and respond on the battlefield. While changes have been made that should improve the rate of responses to roughly match that in Total War Warhammer 2, we still have work to continue improving the air behavior in combat. Yeah. We will have more news about this in future updates that I will share with you later. We need to we need to check the great book of bugs, guys. It's been a month, uh, been a month since uh, the game got released. Oh boy. This does make the game sluggish and uh, uh, there's so much rubber banding. We call it rubber banding, but what the fuck is it? When the multiple units engage and there's like a couple of entities stuck and a whole unit gets pulled back because of those three guys and it's, it's, it's diminishing tactics. It's diminishing uh, any plans and maneuvers you want to do. So it just makes the game uh, unresponsive, unresponsive and frustrating. And too much rubber banding, it's a little bad for the game. The game should be way more responsive. Okay, let's see. Faction balance. Here we go, boys. Here we go. I don't have any alcohol in the house. I said I'm done with alcohol for the rest of the month. I'm done. This is water. Water, bottled water. As mentioned previously, the team will be making various tweaks to different factions based on your feedback and the win rates of the different factions. Because, you know, all people are the same. You, me, and Tiny, we are all the same person. Nobody is different. Nobody clicks faster, thinks faster, or has better tactile awareness of the battlefield. We're all the same, so all that cares is the, you know, the stats. The stats is all that matters. There is a fine balance, faction based on your feedback and the win rates of different players. There is a fine balance to walk between how strong a faction is perceived versus how they perform on the battlefield, you know. But we hope to learn from both as we buff or reduce faction or specific units. What the hell is the domination mode? What the hell? There, buy some booze for you. <laughs> 10 bucks? That's some cheap shit, man. Like, you know, like, it's 20 bucks to buy some good booze here. It's like cheap vodka to pass out, and that's it. God damn. I got standards these days. Grankate 32.74%. Hey, Grankate feels like a faction that is. It's like. They feel like. So far, that we've seen, like, worse dwarves. How can you create worse dwarves? As an AI. Huh. So, Grankate guys, uh, they are the dwarves of the Warhammer tree. What does this mean? Uh, they're gonna get above them, and they're gonna above them again, and they're gonna above them again, and they're gonna above them again, until, uh, you know, nobody can win against them on the campaign map because they have broken balance power world in the first place. The Grankate does feel like dwarves of the Warhammer tree. 32.74%. What, what, what does this mean? Affections that rely on formations and some kind of gimmick uh, can be easily outmaneuvered and outplayed by uh, something like uh, anything that really causes explosions or they can go fast around them or magic. The lords also kind of suck. Like, really, really, really suck. The, the Zhao Ming and Miao Ying, they look, they look okay. You know, I haven't played them, so I can't really uh, criticize yet. 
but the, what I have seen so far, they suck. Especially those regular ones. We've been fighting a lot of Kate with Slanesh, and I'm telling you, uh, the Slanesh just goes zoom, 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 zoom. Kate dead. Doesn't matter how much numbers they have, what units they have, we just zoom across the battlefield and we kill them all like they are a bunch of peasants and not soldiers. So, yeah. This is just the AI, but you know, we are playing against the AI, not multiplayer here. And I am telling you, of all the AI, the Gankate has, seems to have the worst, uh, the worst of it. Uh, of the factions we fought so far. Ogre Kingdoms have a 60, 2.61% uh, uh, win rate. I'm not surprised, the, uh, the units look broken. The mass is... Uh, not only over the top, but it's kind of broken in the game. And due to how the ogres do their attack animations, they don't have the same issue as chariots or cavalry. Which makes them kind of OP, right? Especially against infantry. So this, this doesn't seem like very relevant here. This doesn't seem like very relevant here, so yeah, who cares? Oh uh, yeah, we're gonna be, you know, kick wing. Yeah, that's why who cares, right? Okay, let's see what they, what, they, what they say here. Here are some of the quick notes from the balance team. The balance team exists. They exist. As to how they have chosen the initial balance tweaks of the different factions in 1.1. I, 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 I dislike this thing, guys. I dislike this thing. Because they're gonna try to balance something that's currently broken in the game, like the mass and the large units. Why not fix that first, and then uh, see how the balance is? And I, what I don't like here, they say faction balance. And I'm a little bit offended by this, you know. Uh, what, what, what has has to do this with the campaign? In a campaign, you have economy, you have faction effects, you have technologies. Why should they just not call it multiplayer? Faction, multiplayer faction balance. This this sends a wrong message, guys. This sends a wrong message. This says that uh, the whole the whole perspective on this thing and how they work with it, they're gonna take data out of multiplayer and they're gonna apply it to single player as well. Because you know, according to some you know uh, toxic facts, single player doesn't matter. It's all about the balance in multiplayer. Well, you know. Balance multiplayer game is important, but a company that prioritizes creating uh, campaigns and single player content ca cannot balance a multiplayer game. They just cannot. They suck at it. They don't even give you proper multiplayer infrastructure. So, what the fuck is the point of this? They're trying to get a crowd that uh, is just gonna get sucked in. They're gonna think there's something there, and they're just gonna get slapped a few times, spit a few times, and they're just gonna be even more toxic than they've been when they entered this uh, environment just doesn't work doesn't work it's no longer uh, 2003 when you go into the internet cafe bar you can see the face of your opponent you can look him right in the eyes and you know you fucking know that if he does something bad in the game the counter strike or War warcraft 3 is gonna get beaten up outside when it's all done good and done but on the internet, when you're playing multiplayer, well, there are a bunch of toxic fucks, no faceless people with nicks, you don't know their names, you don't know where they live, you can't beat them up after the match if they've done something bad. It's like, no decency. No decency and it's just fucking toxic wasteland. That's what it is. And they're trying to balance it without any experience in a prop from proper multiplayer game. And when the fucking game is done like this, this toxic radiation just spreads. It spreads into single player, and it spreads into your uh, house, you know, into your family. There's domestic violence and shit like this, you know? Mental uh, disorders and shit like that. Back in the day, you got beaten up, you know you did something wrong, you're gonna change, you have an experience, you know how it feels to get beaten up. These kids, they don't get beaten up anymore. Anybody gets beaten up today, they just end up on the news and it's fucking uh, alarms and shit, police all over the place. 
This is what the problem is today. Those Fortnite kids are not getting bitten up. They just scream into your ears and just toxic as shit. It's because nobody bitten up in their lives. They never learned. Once they get in their twenties, some of them might get salvaged. Oh God forbid they got come play Warhammer 3 multiplayer. Okay, we were off topic here. Where where were we? Here are some quick notes from the balance team as how they chosen the initial <laughs> how they chosen the initial balance tweaks of the different factions in 1.1. Oh man. Man, I would give anything to meet these balance people. Look them in the eye. Maybe beat one of them up. Probably end up in prison these days, right? The Ogre Kingdoms, in general, the overperform we have in both ranked matchmaking and tournaments. We are making some significant adjustments to the units based on community feedback and our metrics. Start whoring. Uh, scared of assembly, they are known start whores. They do a lot of things according to start whoring, guys. So, what does this mean? What does this mean? Uh, what does this mean is... Maybe, maybe people unlock Bellacor and uh, they look at Bellacor and if you're not, I mean, I mean you have to be not a Pepega to unlock Bellacor, right? You have to have at least three working brain cells. Nobody picks Brass Launched on their Lords, don't be one of those. And maybe, maybe you actually read a couple of lines of text when playing your games and... You see this skill, Lord of Torment, and it grants your ability Blade of Shadow. But, Bellacor has already ability Blade of Shadow. And then like, these stud horse are like, this is Bellacor, this is how we build him up, and... Goddamn guys, nobody picks up Lord of Torment. These guys start scratching their heads. Why is nobody picking Lord of Torment? That skill must suck. And so, they might not figure out it's bugged. Or they're gonna buff it if they, you know, find the time before the next content update, right? Or even worse, don't be a fucking Pepega and pick stuff like Indomitable on Legend of the Lords. And maybe in, a, you know, an update down the road, they fucking remove this dog shit from the game because Legend of the Lords, most of them, if not all of them, especially the ones that have 90 leadership, should not have a skill that buffs leadership. You know, because this just, you know, lazy copy pasta that makes no sense. Imagine you being the first fucking demon prince and you have a skill about your leadership. Maybe if you don't suck at the fucking game, don't pick this skill, the devs, the, the star horse in the company are going to fix this shit. Because they're definitely not going to fix it when somebody comes on Reddit and says, What the fuck is the point of Indomitable on Bellacar that has 90 leadership? Most people are not even going to understand this shit. Maybe this shit gets fixed and removed from the game. It's like, this is Bellacor. Why does Bellacor have 12 leadership here? Why not like 10% ward save? I don't know. Bellacor has an inspiring presence but don't have the rest of the battle skills. It's like something stinks here. I don't know. Most people don't really understand what these buttons do here. They just click it and just move on. Hopefully they can out resolve every battle anyways. But yeah, maybe if you stop picking shit, they will fix shit. You know, maybe. Or like Boris Urson, those top two skills on the right side. I don't know. Maybe if you don't pick both of them, one of them actually gets fixed in the future. The, sweet, cruel touch of the Ogre Kingdoms in general are overperforming heavily in both rank matchmaking and tournaments. Tournaments? What? Where, where, where are these tournaments? I missed them. We are making some significant adjustments to the units based on community feedback and metrics. Oh my god. I need a drink. Don't they know the fucking mass and the large units are broken right down the game? Don't they know the ogre, ogres are fighting uh, without any of uh, these problems because how the attack animations work? Maybe 
fix uh, the fucking foundation of the game before uh, doing ball and changes. I mean, look at this, what it says here. The timelines of these projects are currently in the flux as we reprioritize our work to establish a strong foundation for the game upon which we can build. There is no fucking foundation right now uh, because the mass and the large units are broken in the game. Has anybody in that fucking company even used a chariot lately? Like, Slanesh Chariots has no attacks. No fucking attacks. Imagine you release one of the most amazing looking units in the game and there is no fucking attack animation on that unit. It literally has blades that are just aesthetic there, do no damage, and the beasts are biting for like 20 30 damage. There's no attack animation in that unit. That's like probably the worst example. But they're already uh, fixing a whole faction as a whole because they're overperforming in ranked matchmaking in the tournament. There's a reason why they're overperforming. There's a reason because the large units and the masses are currently broken in the game. Grand Cate is currently by far the biggest underperforming in ranked matchmaking and in domination tournaments. We think the Cate is best when their army is large, such as in land battles. Which is why we are increasing the size of all starting armies in domination. We'll be monitoring these changes to see how the meta progresses in the months ahead. Oh man, I'm getting sense of uh, esports here. While Kiso is slightly underperforming in ranked matchmaking according to our metrics, they seem to be performing adequately in determined environments. There are a few units that particularly stand out, and uh, uh, so we are looking to make smaller tweaks while observing the effects of the other change in bug fix. Who the fuck is playing in these tournaments? Fucking uh, dirty casuals that uh, never finished campaign in their life or even learn how to fight battles. Uh, uh, Starcraft 2 dropouts. Think people who think this game is gonna create an esport, they're gonna dedicate three years of their life trying to uh, earn $800 first prize in a tournament. Who is playing these tournaments? Of course, if people are fucking skilled and they're talented, they make, make things all perform. Of course, if people are fucking idiots, they're just gonna go what works and what they're gonna win. Like, why should I bother winning my battles with Kislev when I can win easier and more with Ogre Kingdoms? Do they even take this into consideration as well? Who are these people who play these games? The, the net deckers that heard the Ogres are OP and I want to get my big dick uh, rating. Or the people who really actually want to enjoy playing these factions because, you know, this is, you know, I want to play with Korn, I want to play with Nurgle, I want to play with Zinch. I don't want to just play what wins. Like, what the hell? Nurgle has been doing well in ranked matchmaking, however, we know they don't do well in the tournament environment. Oh my god, man, I'm, I'm getting so stressed about reading out this. This is like, it's like, it's like... Is this Age of Empires 4, uh, main competitor, guys? They're trying to compete with the Age, Age of Empires 4, I think. Those guys that suck playing uh, uh, those f factions there, they can definitely do well in this game. We are also concerned that the slowness of most Nurgle units make them vulnerable to larger armies with ranged firepower, which can result in heavy losses before Nurgle units are able to engage in battle combat. But how about uh, giving uh, Nurgle units a bit more speed? 23 is nothing, but not like 26 or 27. How my skin tingles in snow. These guys are such a fucking big joke, man. They're like, I was like waiting for this one, but this, this looks like Clown's Assembly, guys. Clown's Assembly, all this. This is like some serious shit here. I mean, some, I'm getting some vibes here. And the next tournament is probably going to have a, at least a $1,500 first prize. At least. In upgrade 1.1, we are f he, 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 the guy can add like 300 bucks and he can buy a 380 Ti. No joke. Buy a third of the computer in this day and age. In upgrade 1.1, we are fixing several issues with charges, bracing and impact damage. We feel it's too risky to touch the Slanesh units without having a good understanding of what effects this will have. Fucking hell, man. 
This whole time I'm playing Slanesh, I'm feeling like, what the fuck uh, is the point of playing Slanesh if the chart doesn't work? And these guys are worried that uh, the Slanesh is going to beat everybody because they're going to fix it. It isn't that the fucking the point of Slanesh. No armor, you get speed and damage. And these guys are worried. Literally, my 100 demonets charge a unit, three of them get a charge and all of them just dead stop. The way the way they are saying these words here, guys, it's almost like they've created a game that is successful and has no issues, and now they're looking into, you know, to polish it. And not a broken ass shit that we are experiencing in a couple of stages of the game. They should not touch any of this when they fix the core problems. So nation will work properly for the first time when they fix this shit. We are currently happy with the set of corn and will continue monitoring how they perform in relation to the other balance changes made this month. Our systemic changes should not be shifting the faction much in either direction, but we will watch closely. What do you think? Like they care what we think. We'll share exact details once you, uh, once you log them uh, for 1.1 and look forward to hearing what you think once you are hands on from them next month. Next month. Bug fixes. With every build, we'll be l looking to fix, test and package as many bug fixes into the build as possible again. Working towards a strong baseline for Total War Warhammer 3. Update 1.1 certainly gives us the opportunity to tackle some of the key issues you've helped us identify. If all goes according to plan, everything passes through testing and it's confirmed to not have any side effects. Yeah, it's copium. Here's a taste of some of the key fixes coming your way. Bug fixes, huh? Alt plus stop crash fix. We are aiming to have a Steam beta in your hands next week and we'll let you know as soon as it is available. Depending on success, we will handle and share this with the rest of the community in update 1.1. I don't have this issue because I've uh, been using two screens. Uh, gift of Slanesh. Conflict between the Everlasting Gift Tech and the Gift Slanesh update will be resolved in the update. Because, you know, it's preventing everybody to uh, fully enjoy Slanesh because it's not the charges that are issues, it's the Gift of Slanesh that's the problem. Oak sticks out the battle of Fort Downgard, not after 1.1, it won't. Soft lock when ending your turn after using Yuri, not anymore, also fixed in 1.1. Crash fix. Several crash fixes will be implemented based on your reports, both here and uh, with our support team. There will be ongoing effort as we work, work to get everyone in and playing the game. Uh, Shadow Shroud. Bellacor's ability Shadow Shroud is now associated with his unique skill. Lord of Shadows. So this is supposed to be a uh, uh, Shadow Shroud. Because you get uh, both Shadow Shroud and the Blade of Shadow. So they added the uh, wrong skill here. This is supposed to grant uh, uh, the Shadow Shroud. This shit is so fucking half-assed. Almost as bad as uh, Gotrek and Felix. No trade, and you don't know which one is bugged here. Which one is uh, tended. They, they even say the wrong thing here. Shadow Shroud. Bellacora build Shadow Shroud is now associated with see Nick trait. Like what? What the hell are they talking about? Harbinger. It's not trait. I'm fucking confused. This one is bugged and he has no trait. Cool. 
Corrupted by factions will now be able to remove negative corrupted tra uh, by traits when in a region dominated by their favor corruption. Okay, thank God. That's uh, that's really bad for Slanesh. Slanesh has no replenishment, and so when you get stuff like this, when you get stuff like corrupted by Nurgle, you can get rid of it, and you can get it as low as like 22 uh, corruption. So you're stuck for the rest of the game with negative replenishment. What's worse, uh, usually all the cards get at the same time. Which means it prevents your army from replenishing. And uh, Slash has no replenishment. And then when you're in the mountains, which for some reason are places for demons, and even worse, desert, uh, the only uninhabitable uh, climate for demons. For some reason, you know, demons can live in the desert, but they can corrupt desert to 100%. Uh, yeah. Forget replenishment. Achievement issues. Whether unlocking achievements the wrong way, not unlocking achievements at all, unlocking duplicate achievements, we are implementing fix for many of the achievements available in the game, and more. This is by no means a complete list. There are plenty of behind the scenes fix and other fixes that require testing confirmation before we're comfortable committing to their conclusion in the update. We'll show the full list in update 1.1. I'm looking forward to reading those patch notes, especially the balance section. Since at least next month, I'll have a bottle ready. I encourage you to continue consolidating the bugs and other issues you find in the threads here on the forum. Or contact our support team if you're experiencing technical issues. Who do we send our crash reports to? I only have two crash reports in my folder. What are you even doing there? So, uh, when you go into uh, your uh, Warhammer 3 folder under Creative Assembly, this is what you get. And uh, this is this folder called Crash Report. And each crash is about 26 megabytes. So if your game crashes 100 times, if your crash crashed uh, 4 times, you get over 1 gigabyte of trash in that folder. Which will stay there forever. What do I do with this shit? The game crashed twice for us so far. So what the hell they do with this? If you go, if your game crashed a lot and you go into that folder, you're gonna have that folder full. Uh, at some point of Warhammer 2, we had uh, this folder with uh, a couple of gigabytes. Every time a game crashes, it creates a report there. But who is getting that report? Who is how how are they getting that report? It's 26 megabytes. That's no small file. It's just there, and uh, what 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 does it exist there? Who, who is using that? There's no, op like, like when Gwent crashes, like a proper multiplayer game, uh, you can uh, write what was happening at the time and then they send the report. And they receive the report. It's unlikely you're going to see the crash again. Well, here you're going to see the same crash all over again. And again, and again, and again, and again, and again. And then the folder is going to go uh, a couple of gigabytes. And what the fuck is the point of this? Why are they created? Who is getting that? There's no way to report this or upload it anywhere. I feel like at some point in time, they stopped caring about these things, because people install mods to the game, and they corrupt the game. By just installing the mod, you corrupt their files. That's how it works. And uh, when the files are corrupted, nothing they can do with it. And they stopped caring about these corrupted files, because you are guys using mods. And this is why we can have nice things, as in, you know, properly patched game. Funny thing is, these crashes are happening even using mods or not. While the assembly kit is uh, still in the works as we prioritize our fix to the core game, we are excited to share that we will aiming to release the mod manager and enable a workshop support alongside update 1.1. We plan to continue expanding the toolset and options to our various polls in the months and years to come. We hope this will kickstart the modding efforts of the community and we continue to work on official update to the updates to the game. Uh, beyond 1.1, what comes after update 1.1? Well, this is only the beginning, the rot. As we mentioned throughout our posts, uh, the goal at this very moment is to iron 
out the technical wrinkles, improve the stability and performance of the game, as in finish the game, and adjust the balance and the gameplay based on the ongoing commentary from the community. This is all uh, with the very specific goal of establishing a strong baseline for Third War Hammer 3. One that supports the ongoing growth of the game with new content, new factions and new modes for you to all explore. New modes, oh boy. Uh, like Warhammer 3, our plan is to eventually pair large content drops with regular game updates. Bug fixes, balance changes and the sword. So they're gonna go with uh, a big update, big DLC. However, we are also looking to raise our game above Warhammer 2 by introducing major patch updates between our key DLC releases. Thank God. Allowing us to address bugs, balance concerns and other adjustments on a quicker cadence than previous games. All uh, this is aimed at establishing a more reliable cadence of releases once we've established a strong foundation for the game and its future. It's uh, it's uh, you know, but half of this is true, you know, we might, uh, we might be okay. Looking ahead to the, uh, to the Warhammer 3 roadmap. Uh, we know that many of you are eager uh, for the long-term roadmap of what's coming down the line. It very much includes many devs here at Creative Assembly who are excited to share our plans. We read you all loud and clear. Goddamn, I had better not see uh, Three Kingdoms 2 at the end of the year, or a fucking uh, another saga game. We know where the priorities were then, if they're at least at the end of the year. If they delayed at the start of the year, it's gonna be the same shit, probably. Uh, we are in the process of pulling together a, a look at the year ahead and we hope to share you after the up release of update 1.1. Things are in the flux at the moment uh, as we rebalance the work of Warhammer 3 with the future projects. Things are in the flux. This flux again, guys. Things are in the flux at the moment as we rebalance the work on Warhammer 3 with future projects. Which means uh, they gotta get those multiple teams back on Warhammer 3, boys. They thought they were done with the game, but no, 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 no. Back to the drawing board. So once things settle and cement a bit, we'll be sharing more uh, about the year ahead and the general what and when things will be coming to the game. We'll let you know when we have that ready to go. Oh boy. Closing out. Uh, thanks for making it through this wall of information. We hope the supposed are helpful for those uh, of you looking to understand what we are working on and working towards with the game. We'll keep the information flowing and continue adjusting how and when we communicate based on your reactions, feedback and expectations. And again, thank you for all your ongoing support and patience to see uh, Warhammer 3 reach its full potential. It's certainly... Uh, a room to grow, but we're confident we'll get there, with your feedback serving as guidance. Oh man, what a load of shit. And we will all have uh, a plan to expand and grow uh, the total World War Hammer 3 universe. Thanks to all you, all you who continue to be a part of the conversation over feedback with the quality of the game at heart. Yeah, legend, stop bitching about it. Give some proper feedback so they can listen to it. And help others who are having trouble playing the game. You are at the core of this community and will continue to be your biggest fans as you ver work to improve your game. Oh man. Doesn't look like we're getting uh, Warhammer 3 uh, in, uh, uh, in the first half of the year. The more Lampars. This is the gay book of bugs. How many entries do we have? So we've been tracking uh, pretty much the uh, the bugs, issues, uh, uh, features, and oversights, and commenting on some quality of life that can be you know changed. We got the 21 entries with the bugs, and we got 31 entries with issues, features, and oversights. We got uh, four under quality of life. So we're gonna go over this one last time before the 1.1 uh, uh, update.
So this is not in any order or anything. Uh, it could be probably organized a little bit more. This is for me playing the game uh, 270 hours. Uh, most of these things were found in the first 200 hours. And this is me playing uh, Seduce, uh, Ice Court and the Seduces of Slanesh. Some of the things that, uh, that we have encountered and we heard about, uh, it's not uh, on this list because uh, we need to understand it better. We need to confirm it. So there's a lot more than this. A lot more than this. So under the bugs, you know, some trivial stuff. The campaign moon range don't work on heroes. You know, like Kiss of the Coast, those are strategies, you know. Not the end of the world, but it's not been working since day one of Warhammer 1. There's a supply lines bug, which we've seen pretty much in day one. You uh, recruit our lords, and you increase your upkeep. As long as the lords are alive, their upkeep stays permanently increased. Not the end of the world, uh, it does cause some pressure on the economy, some factions more than others, like personal nation doesn't really matter for uh, keys level, it matters a lot. Uh, the buff highlights, uh, when he gets buffs to like speed or armor, uh, pass spell or whatever, the sometimes bugged, it shows like a base stat. Sometimes units have buffs originating from the campaign effects and they are uh, part of the uh, uh, like baseline buff. Does it work as a baseline? I haven't confirmed it, but the buff highlights uh, show as base stats, which is bug in itself. And it kind of looks bad. It looks uh, uh, like somebody rushed that part of the game. And I see that uh, all the stats and the numbers being recorded as well, it looks like half-assed. Spawn of Slanesh uh, is missing superific mask on their attacks. It's like all the spawns have, uh, are, from the looks of it, are fine except the Spawn of Slanesh. And uh, they don't have the debuff on their attacks. Apparently, uh, no, but not important. Uh, some technologies, uh, at least uh, seeing they're doing the wrong things, like uh, the Witch Hunter Conquest one, uh, not really a big deal. The, uh, the leader of Drusian Enclave has the bug traits, and that's the, the Ice Witch that leads that faction. Uh, if you seduce Black Ark Corsairs, we got uh, bugged user interface to Murderous Prowess, playing a Seducer Slanesh. The Herald of Slanesh is sometimes missing spells to leading the Disciple Army, so it's 50-50. Go into a battle, you get spells, you get the next battle, you don't get spells. Spell cost, by the way. Uh, the landmark uh, for Slanesh with the Grouse uh, recruit ranks, the Monets don't work. And it's the only good landmark they have, really. Uh, this is an old bug from uh, Warhammer 2. Uh, the long term parachute veils are bugged. So they never start working. Uh, they stopped increasing. They don't increase properly. Uh, the trade veils are also off. They start uh, decreasing randomly as well. Which, uh, if they, you know, if. You know, if I learned anything about the uh, CA, you know, they're inconsistent, especially when it comes to spaghetti code and bugs. But uh, when it comes to these numbers, uh, you know, this is like one thing where they should be at least consistent because it's simple. Why would they make something as simple as the value of trade resources uh, uh, decrease in value or change in value? Logic would be inflation to in actually increase the cost of the resources so the trade actually makes sense, coexist with other factions. But this game is off, and it's so off that it's the only explanation it's bugged. So either make them a fixed value or just inflate as the game increases uh, in length because of the how it worked in the pre-solo games, it's the same system as in the older games. And uh, they should just increase the value, like Iron Sergeant in 10, and 6 turns later would be like 12 or 13. It, uh, it looks bad, it makes no sense, and it's... Uh, just a thing that, uh, uh, you know, it feels like just they don't care really to adjust. It's something broke on along the way. They're using an old ROM2 system, which worked perfectly in ROM2. Heck, I think it worked perfectly in Attila, and in the war, in the uh, Warhammer games, it started bugging out. And if you don't pay attention, there's uh, probably hundreds of things to uh, notice like this. So, uh, if you watch this stream, you're going to see me mention this or, you know, notice these things, because we actually pay attention. And uh, there's uh, hundreds of things like this that are bugging the game. And uh, they never really get their attention for some reason. Like, uh, they don't really care about uh, polishing stuff like this for some reason. Uh, There's a bug with the Slanesh faction that we encountered. Uh, it happened uh, when we vassalized Stalag Backland. Uh, the Fog of War got bugged. And it's on and off. Sometimes everything would just disappear in full war. It's it's something to do with uh, 
uh, I feel like with military allies and vassal system. Like the vassal system is using uh, the military ally uh, uh, system, but it's different. As in, you know, it's just borrowed, uh, borrowed uh, layers of military alliance, which means, you know, it's just lazy done. And the way they do it, uh, they don't only really click, uh, uh, treat it as a military alliance, but what it is, in a military alliance, you're in a partnership, right? And you get vision, you can, uh, uh, you get like even too much. And sometimes, you, you know, you know, grand scheme of things, military allies are not really like supposed to be even friends, but they're just, you know, supposed to, you know, uh, unite us against one objective. So it doesn't really make sense that you get all the vision and all the information from your military ally. It's like you sign, you got me in a marriage or something and, uh, it's open both ways. But when you make somebody your puppet or your vassal, a lot of information is hidden from you. And it's the same system. And I think uh, in Warhammer 3 there's some kind of bug with this that just makes it even worse. But regarding the Fog War and this whole thing in Warhammer 3, it feels like... Uh, I'm, I've grown up on playing uh, uh, overhauls, modern overhauls, because the early CA games were dog shit. You need like some serious overhauls in Total War and Real Total War to actually get a good game. And uh, so every now and then, somebody you would think, you know, like, uh, you know, I can do a good overhaul like those other guys, and they create uh, some kind of mod overnight. And the whole system of factions, fog of war, exploration, and how the realms of chaos have been placed in the, uh, in the campaign, it feels like half assed and rushed. The whole systems are out of place, and no wonder stuff like this bugs out. For example, you can see uh, the Realms of Chaos, uh, when somebody is in there, you'll see them move around. You'll see the position of their armies, you can see the size of their armies, and it's supposed to be hidden, unexplored territory that, that exists in another dimension. But no, when somebody enters there, everybody knows you are in there. Everybody gets a message, they got a direct video link, but uh, they get a dark screen, but they see them moving around. They, they, somebody is doing stuff in there. Even Zubar, who doesn't have anything to do with this shit, uh, when somebody enters Korn's realm, all those factions in the Korn's realm enter a war without any message, event or anything that affects the whole campaign, how diplomacy works, Everybody's at war with those factions. Even if you have nothing to do with the Realm of Chaos, Corn, or with this mechanic in the game. And this creates uh, problems mechanically and gameplay-wise. And when you think about it too much, it's gonna ruin your game. So, I call it a mess. They create a mess with a bunch of these generic respawning factions and all these auto wars, they're not even declarations of war, but just auto wars that make no sense. The, the shit uh, has, the game has systems. The systems should be used to touch all these factions, mechanics, and the gameplay to make everything to make sense. But the way they make this campaign, it does make no sense. Things uh, come, uh, respawn out of thin air. They get units out of thin air, and I'm not talking about just realm of chaos. I'm talking about outside realm of chaos. Literally every rogue army faction is, uh, it's like it's like they're opening console and adding units to their armies. It's like it's like you know, guys, when people say cheating on the air bonuses, these guys are literally cheating. They are getting created out of thin air. They're adding units in their arms out of thin air. Sometimes even ten tier five units appear in those armies out of fucking nowhere. And these factions, they don't even respect the rules or the mechanics or how the rogue army is supposed to behave. For example, there is the Law Alliance of Order or some Catan rogue army that spawns in the fucking chaos wastes. First, they have no uh, diplomacy going on with anybody. They add troops to their armies and they just stay there randomly. They literally look like a, a broken guy in the corner, just waiting uh, to start working. But they can't work because they didn't put lines of text for them to work. It's, it's half-assed, bugged rogue armies all over again. And then the same rogue armies 
the same rogue armies of demons of chaos who are basically the copy of uh, legion of chaos but better uh, generate units out of thin air they get 10 tier 5 units sometimes in a single turn and they're automatically at war with the order factions in primarily Kislev why is everybody there to fuck over Kislev when Kislev has not a single good ally in the game left they made Kislev uh, uh, everybody so focused on Kislev meanwhile an alliance of order rogue army is just sitting there in the chaos ways fapping to some fucking came girls on the internet and doing nothing nothing while having some high tier units when they're supposed to be attacking those guys uh, you know the enemies of Kislev why is it the rogue armies of the demons are working while the rogue armies of the order are broken and this causes a big issue with everything and everything just gets worse god forbid you uh, play on a higher difficulty and uh, you don't have patience or have no idea what you're doing it's literally just going to be uh, they, they are strangling you slowly choking you to death closer every turn the rogue armies in Warhammer 2 how they behaved we had two types of rogue armies in Warhammer 2 one type of rogue armies were the ones that uh, sometimes spawn on the land and these rogue armies uh, had their unique flavor sometimes most times they would just be broken and afk there they started with a set of units like seven or eight but sometimes you know uh, the code kicks in and they start working and they're a menace they uh, encamp they uh, recruit armies they raid they take settlements they even sometimes create their own faction in here they change this they change this the, these rogue armies are uh, uh, ones that are supposed to actually help are broken and ones that are going to ruin your day are broken in the opposite direction so ones are broken doing nothing and ones are so broken they are just literally stacked to make you have a frustrating frustrating experience and this is all happening while everybody else is fucking you over while you have to get souls at the same time so somebody fucked up with the rogue arms in this game and you know we went from kind of like uh, went from a different direction here we're talking about the all this vision and uh, what's up going on with diplomacy so what happens here sometimes a faction can have a list of 10 enemies 10 fucking enemies and all these enemies are literally just coming out of thin air you don't even see where the fuck they are sometimes like the rift armies like the uh, realm of chaos armies like uh, uh, those additional armies in the corns realm and then on top of this you have uh, bugged rogue armies and all this is messing up the whole gameplay balance uh, of the game and if you think it does not affect you just think about it like this for a second ai plays the game as well and they're supposed to you know play it with you what do you think happens when out of nowhere out of fucking nowhere constantly one two three four five up to like 12 factions join wars out of thin air on various factions of the world it just makes the ai go into the craziest pepper meltdown you have ever seen it just breaks everything shit should make sense and these systems exist in the game to be used like this factions appearing out of nowhere like this is is i feel like it's just making the whole game going into pep meltdown if you don't pay any attention with this happening uh, uh, ignorance is bliss you're gonna have a better experience but you know if you if you're gonna be paying attention study what is happening everything is fucked because of all those factions that exist in the game but they don't exist really in the game they created uh, pepper meltdown on the fucking ai who's already stressed they can't even handle uh, an army of the rift You know guys the ai has hidden uh, hidden stuff in the game like they have their you know their hopes and dreams their uh, goals you know they want to finish college and not drive a taxi they want to you know get a big salary and shit like this well they, they can't do shit when they're getting stressed all the time what is going to be my focus what is going to be my objective am i going left am i going right am i going to have defend that city i'm going to attack that player 
I have in 260 hours, I have never uh, experienced a more fucked up AI behavior than in all of Total Wars, really, of the Warhammer series. There was a dwarf army in the water, literally sailing in circles for 15 turns. It's because of, of this change that's happening with the with all these factions coming out of nowhere and they're just changing their priorities. This is the same problem that is happening in battles as well. They've created a better Kappa AI, but what they have created really is fucking indecisive AI. They created indecisive AI, but not respecting the game systems. On the campaign map, diplomacy, relations, priorities, not enemies out of nowhere. Not enemies out of nowhere. Uh, and uh, what is in the battles? They created, the new, they created the, the, the new systems like the, the supplies and the objectives, and they've just the AI was all the fra fragile, and they just made it worse. So they what did not create another better AI by indecisive AI for better or worse. Well, Swanee, uh, uh, Swanee is saying rebels are fine in lower difficulty Elich, dot, 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 because it's tied to control and it's so measured, dot, dot, dot. But legendary gives AI cheats, so these stupid rebel factions pop out of nowhere. Uh, are you not listening to what I'm saying? The rebels uh, do not, uh, are not a problem for the player. You, have you been seeing or listening a word I've been saying? Have you been playing this game? Have you seen a rift that causes 50 corruption? Rebels for the player are fucking free money. They're making the game easier. You're totally clueless there, man. Clueless. Talking about AI versus AI and how the AI prioritizes their plan in the campaign. God damn. Talking, uh, I don't know who the... What the hell, man? This, this is why we can't have nice things. Is, I'm talking about uh, a core problem in the game that exists literally in every difficulty and it's mentioning us just because we're playing in legend difficulty. It's probably some norm gets triggered, you know, that we are do criticizing uh, AI behavior on the legend difficulty. Because, you know, it got to be the legend of difficulty, it's nothing else, right? Fucking hell, man. This is a core AI problem. Like I said, they've created an indecisive AI that just doesn't work. And it's making the game easier and harder in both directions. It is just going a pepe meltdown. Pepe meltdown. This whole system they created of these factions appearing out of nowhere. Each realm having their faction, each rift having their faction, but they shared the banner. That alone is eight additional factions. They do not uh, exist uh, uh, in diplomacy, but they exist in the world, so they're not listed. If they are uh, forever existing in the game, why not just them keep existing in the game instead of just making the AI uh, run in circles? On top of this, there is, uh, what, five rogue armies in the Nurgles, in the Corn's uh, realm? Five? And this is a sure thing. The realms will open all around the world. And this, uh, you can't really call this rebels. I, I, these are not rebels. These are literally just demon incursions because they are there to cre create corruption and this corruption uh, loss lose control. And it, uh, these are not standard rebels. These are, demon, de uh, these are uh, armies that are going to come out of the portals as well. Not just rebels. So it's a big problem with, uh, with the AI de uh, decisiveness. Their whole plan on the campaign map is fucked because they're already going for uh, Reno Souls. The minor factions, they're all fucked because they have to contend with major factions. And at the same time, uh, they're getting invaded by the demons. Don't confuse this with rebellions. Everything should be listed on, on, on the known factions. Even if these factions are currently not present in the world. They exist in the game. They're part of the game. 
because you don't don't see it. You can only pay attention and see how it works. The developers never ever said a fucking word about this thing in all my years of playing their games. It just works. Because if they start talking about this shit here, that's a rabbit hole, and I might attract questions they don't know the answers for oh my for them. God. You know. Have you seen that shit? Holy shit! What the hell? And I think uh, this is the problem. Uh, this is the problem uh, with the fog of war and this, and this this whole this whole thing. The AI, the AI has no full war. There's always been this thing. Like in Warhammer 2, you would have those uh, uh, other Chaos factions. The one that spawned in the desert and two that would spawn in the water. One between Nagar and Ultuan and one between Lastria and the Southlands. And then one below the desert. These factions would exist in the game, but they don't exist in the game. And they do have that uh, usual behavior as the factions, but... Uh, most factions just, you know, treat them as, you know, rebel factions. Because that's the name for a faction that uh, doesn't exist on the known list. It's a, it's a rebel faction, right? You cannot interact with them, what I'm saying. But they should still be listed on the, on the known faction list. Because they're in the game. And in Warhammer 3, this gotten way, way worse. It's like, how do the uh, fog of war and exploration works in, in the game? The, uh, the AI has no fog of war. We call this uh, spy satellites. They know everything. They can anticipate your moves. They probably anticipate them at certain range, because you know, you know, game plan, everything needs to be a little bit more sense. Once you learn this thing here, you know, you can use it to your advantage sometimes. But what had happens with this? What happens with this when the AI has no fog of war? How do they balance all this shit? Uh, how the AI interact with each other? When this stop making sense, the game loses something. You know, some any any level of immersion that it ever had is gone, I think. And when you realize they're all there to get you, the player focus exists, but it's not that crazy as you think. In Warhammer 3, it's made crazy, but it, it usually always existed. It's never been that bad as in Warhammer 3. And when you have this thing gone, immersion gone, and when they're just treating you as the player and doing everything to undermine you, even when the systems are literally turned against you, it just makes everything worse. And I'm not saying, you know, you cannot overcome this problem so difficult. Well, people are just going to get frustrated and going to give up on this shit, but the thing is, this shit makes no sense. This shit makes no sense, and shit should make sense. Like, Azak declares a va in the Gormadi Mountains, among the Norsk and shitholes, and you're in Lastria. It's like turn 12. What? What the hell? We don't know these people. We don't know those lands. We never left our jungle. We're just peace loving skinks uh, living our lives here. What the hell? What the hell we do with Azak and the Vi in the other side of the world? When you see shit like this, they know that uh, shit gets half fast and rushed. They add these uh, things in the game and it doesn't respect the rules of the game. And this is one of these things. The rules in the game exist and they should be respected. Otherwise, you know, they're gonna get this code bullshit excuse and uh, shit's just gonna get worse. This thing don't get fixed, it's just gonna get worse. Spaghetti code is gonna kick in and we're gonna get crashes and bugs. These things uh, uh, cause problems. No. This one was uh, probably the worst one we experienced with this. And I, I feel like the any any immersion you can get in that game is gone. And it's like what the fuck is a is a point of playing a prologue into a highly narrative experience campaign if they, they destroy immersion completely by, you know, having the mechanics all of a sudden no longer respect the, uh, the rules they've created in the first place. It's, it, it, I don't know. It feels like they just kept adding shit on top of shit on top of shit and uh, they expect everything to work without gluing everything together. That's how it feels like to me. It is probably a problem with... Uh, uh, those other dimensions being present on the on the map. 
So when you think about it, why the hell do you see those armies moving and why is everybody at war with them? It's like everybody knows everybody, apparently. Uh, unless you're a player, then you have to still meet them. And uh, you have vision into the uh, realm of chaos, but you don't see in anything in there. You see what I'm talking about? It makes no sense. You see in there, but you don't see anything. So why do they hide it in the first place? So what I'm, get, what I'm trying to say here, you know guys how the campaign is lagging all the time? Why is the campaign lagging? What are those luck spikes that are happening? Could be their shitty optimization, right? But what if something else is going on there? Regarding this shit here. How are we even at war with all those factions if we have never even seen them in our lives before? It's almost like, uh, what I'm saying, it's almost like there is a screen uh, uh, over a screen. And they both need performance, you know what I'm saying? It's like, it's like this, it's like this. Uh, uh, pretend, uh, you know, this, this area here, this area here is the, uh, actually don't see this. Like this area here is the realm of chaos, right? And what they've done is just just put a big, big obstacle over it so you don't see it unless you're in there. But it's constantly there anyways. It's being processed and it's there. So it's basically just a screen on top of a screen and you can see everybody moving there but you don't see them and it's causing all these issues. That's what I'm saying. You're in the realm of chaos? Oh, it's gone. You know, in the land of chaos, it's here, but you can still, uh, uh, you know, uh, see things moving around. And this gotta be causing some issues with the game. This gotta be causing issues with the game. Big issue with fog of war, and this is this is this is complicated. This goes in like this is like one, probably one of the core issues of performance and even gameplay on the whole campaign. Play some more game and pay attention, you will see what I'm talking about. Hovering over units in the enemy army that are not supposed to show full health, only uh, uh, unit one type still uh, says how much health they have not here. Yeah, this is a bug. We can see the health of their units even if they don't have information. Okay, that's uh, just a... Uh, uh, the kills of tech, harbor tech war, uh, doesn't work. Global recruitment, this is, you know, uh, it's just a minor thing. Recruit ranks don't apply to global recruiting locally. You know, uh, this could be just be, you know, unintentional features or they just might have forgot. But one time they updated one of these things with Tomb Kings, which tells me this is, uh, this is a bug and not intentional. Because this, uh, you know, like the, uh, the right, it gives recruitment to the global as well. Then you do global at a time. Uh, seducers of Slanesh sometimes get more chaos from battles. Uh, this has actually uh, yeah, been an uh, issue throughout. So uh, we fought uh, against uh, 561, and we have captured 756. So uh, this is uh, definitely some kind of bug here. There's a, there's a lot of these issues with post battle. Depending how the battle is uh, uh, starts, we're targeting a smaller force, larger force. Are they getting reinforced? The replenishment is unreliable on and off. Zero percent sometimes give full replenishment. Uh, sometimes uh, you get three, two, three percent. Literally nobody gets replenishment. Everything is off. Mission the gift that keeps on giving with the Slash complete. Both uh, missions that uh, around the waters did not complete. Did anybody manage to complete the 20,000 waters mission of Slanesh? Because this one doesn't complete for me. So it looks like they both don't work. The perfect vigor is not perfect vigor right now in the game. It's bugged. The fire belly doesn't have spells and the garrisons. And this is an old bug. Uh, unit experience is applied to the characters because uh, of, you know, reasons. 
look at this. This is the Belaker bug, but uh, the way they said it in the patch notes makes no sense. Because it's bug, bug is different here. So he has a skill that grants an ability, but uh, he starts with that ability, so he doesn't have a skill. But apparently that uh, second skill is a trait which does not exist in the game. So which one is it? Who knows? Uh, Belakor is missing a trait as well. Character without a trait, that just seems, uh, you know, off. Okay, we should update that one. He's also missing his trade, because there's definitely a bug, you know, fuck them lazy fuckers. Gotrek uh, is missing a trade as well. This is what's going in the book. F day fucking one we see Gotrek without a trade. Missing, uh, imagine releasing a legendary character like uh, Gotrek or, or Felix uh, or Belakor and then have a trait. <laughs> they even had the balls to give him a generic trait like Tactician, man. Like, this is even worse than Exalted, the demons not getting their unique traits. Fucking uh, lazy, eh? lazy, just lazy. Ataman's uh, traits uh, are uh, uh, bugged. Uh, they only really work at the start of the turn. At least the ones for the recruitment. Uh, the hit recruitment ones. I did that one as well. So if you uh, don't recruit the hero with plus three, Patriarch plus three, Frost from the Ataman uh, uh, before you do the battle, uh, it's gonna bug for the rest of the turn. Yeah, the, the, uh, what I'm uh, assuming that the uh, uh, the Ottomans work at the start of the turn, but uh, if you do battles, uh, the trade stop working on the next turn. Okay, this one is also pretty big. Armies requested from allies add up to supply lines and they don't even count as an army on a total tip or have any cost, but they increase upkeep on all other armies. So if you request allies, uh, armies from allies, as long as the army is in your faction, you have to pay additional upkeep on all your armies. But this faction all the cost allegiance in the first place, which means they are not supposed to have any cost in gold. So, uh, under issues, features, and oversights, we're gonna go through all this, and we're not gonna go through the great book of bugs until they patch the game. Every time they patch the game, we're gonna check it out. So, this could be like once, uh, maybe like every two months thing. Like, they're gonna release a patch every two months, tell it, right? I'm just uh, checking it out, because, you know, uh, going it off the stream, uh, and checking these all these things, we gotta also uh, see the shit, you know, remind myself what is even there in the first place. So, under section issues, features, and oversights. So, indecisive AI and sieges moving around and not fighting while getting engaged. That's one of the big issues in the game. Big issue in the game, and it's been brought on by the uh, settlement defenses and sieges. This has been brought by a Siege rework. We should edit this. So indecisive AI, big issue with uh, sieges and settlement battles. You remember guys when we were reading uh, the siege rework video, we watched it on the stream recently as well. 
in the size of AI and C just moving around and not fighting while getting engaged. Brought on by the Siege rework, their so-called improved AI should be called indecisive AI. Okay. This is basically a follow-up. Instead of fighting AI, trying to force motor units to get the objective, getting killed in the process. I think we can merge this too. We can merge this too. Uh, instead of fighting AI, trying to force move through enemy units to get to objective, getting killed in the process, AI should know better if to move through infantry units or try to destroy them to get to the objective. Current siege rework blobs of man and tower defense, and mo most times AI just tries to push through them and get destroyed. Let's just uh, make this uh, with cops lock. Oh, look at this, we removed an entry. Merging doesn't count. Okay, this is a pretty big one. This is like, like the issue num numero uno in Warhammer 3. This thing here. Numero uno. This allows you to win uh, unwinnable battles. This allows you uh, uh, also, once you learn it, to be also highly abusable depending on the enemy composition. Four tower and fully built settlement like Prague are basic air towers, while in low tier settlements max upgrade ones. Possibly tiers are reverse settlements having top tiers, while big cities have low tiers. But basically, I attack a settlement, tier one, they shoot those lasers of doom that uh, two shot heroes. And then you attack tier five, Prague. And they shoot arrow towers, no damage. This fuck up has happened a couple of times over the years in Warhammer 2 as well, with Aldorf, for example. So, same old bug appearing from Warhammer 2 into Warhammer 3. Okay, 3. I feel like, uh, I feel like we can actually, I feel like this one should be Numero Duo. Because this is like, this is like pretty, pretty important, really. Oh, we put in the order here. Okay, that was numero, this was three. Uh, two, trade system. Too weak and boring. Exalted demons of chaos should know that all random generic traits instead have a unique one. Pick an option between various traits similar to Dark Elves' names of power. Not much to gain to change into Exalted Demon. You lose all traits, you get a crap trade, and you lose a lot of levels and experience. Yeah. That's sad because you know getting to the, getting a, becoming an exalted demon should you know should uh, feel special, right? It doesn't feel special right now. It feels like a like a downside. Well, I, I I feel like we had some uh, misunderstanding in the cookies. I, I I'm not saying this is a this is a good thing. I think uh, that the fact this is happening, that it's abusable, it's a, it's a bad thing. I 
when you when uh, when they attack with a with a quality army, especially Nurgleen, where they just get destroyed by the towers, cause you know because all this shit, it, it makes the game look really bad, like steaming pile of shit. Where the hell is the auto resolve issue? Yeah. Four tower. Okay, I think we can merge those two. This is uh, this is one of the really big issues in the game. This is probably the number one uh, issue for me, really, in the in Warhammer Three. Balance of power slash out result is way too punishing, even for the smallest battles. Legend, or oh, this is for legend difficulty. Auto resolve still sometimes destroy units even when outcome shows the units will be destroyed. This is critical. This is critical in a total war game to be watched closely, tune at all fucking times, and never let to get to, uh, to either side of the spectrum, either being stabilizing the game or making you fight uh, 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 all those shitty battles because of, uh, you know. You can't really afford replenishment for three turns after every battle. Just because you're gonna auto resolve. This is the one of the most absolute uh, uh, things to fix in the game. This should be the, the top priority to always monitor and change and improve. And that system they introduced with uh, uh, seeing the outcome, they should expand on that. They should expand on that. And should even even show numbers really. This is this is a, a feature that uh, uh, can add hours and hours and hours to the campaign, unnecessary hours. And sometimes uh, the opposite side, uh, you know, trivialize some uh, uh, big battles where you, they put you ahead. It should not happen in either way. So we'll go under four, under four. This is another one of the big issues. Charge damage and collision damage, especially when causing knockbacks, seem to do next to no damage. Some of the chariots and shock carriers have very high charge and should have good collision damage. I sent 20 to 40 plus guys flying into air and then all of them just get up. Big lances are different legion slash chariots. Slash chariots don't even have any attackers on them. And those blades don't do any damage. Uh, one of the keys of technology is Kislevian Duka doesn't make any sense. And most Kislev resource producing buildings have no income. And one resource that how it works, Gold Kislev produces no resource from it. Uh, it no resource from it, Golden Idols. Yeah, this, this technology makes no sense. Uh, not really a big deal, but still, you know, mentioning in the book. Lords, army followers, still present heroes, yep. Yeah. We've seen it on both Kislev and Slanesh, specifically the movement range follower. Both Kislev and Slanesh so far, variety of generic character names is lacking, sometimes even three, four identical names. Some names repeating too often. Okay, yeah, that's uh, another thing. Uh, Marba Tombs, it says he was a Dwarven King, but he was human. Yeah, that's uh, another thing. I think I read that book, learned something, yeah. 
Seducers of Star and Ash have not general replenishment buffs. Skill tech, hero ability, trade forward, demon mechanic, no replenishment. Forget it. Nothing. Post battle replenishment is unreliable. And oftentimes also, you know, just off. Remove percentage from movement range it has become misleading with points not being shown. Now being shown. Uh, stances 2 now just... Uh, uh, sh stances 2 now just take flat points. So why keep percentage? So you still sometimes get stances not available when you have exact movement left to assume stance, like 50 for the game stance. Reason for it could be the movement range powers create not visible decimal numbers in as in 49.6 equals 50, but it shows plus 50 and you can camp, yeah. So if you guys haven't seen this, 25% uh, is 25 movement. 50% is 50 movement. But your uh, lords can have 200 movement. So uh, the percentage uh, now that they are showing actual points is misleading and should be just completely removed and all just adjusted to the flat numbers. That will be a, a huge change. A kind of big deal. They're just really misleading, you know. I'm like, uh, the first time, first thing I'm turning Fenron and he's trying to, you know, get 25% for ambush. Meanwhile, it has over 40 moon points. So, uh, you can see it's very misleading. The Martians actually add uh, uh, now, in, it actually works different in Warhammer 3. It will add you more movement points. Training, hero ability too weak. My suggestion is to add 2% base replenishment to the experience and then additional plus 1, 2 and 3 with the skill ranks. The training has always been dog shit in Warhammer games. Absolute trash uh, hero ability. When you compare it to, uh, to the actual replenishment, you get add 17% replenishment to the army. Meanwhile, training gives you, uh, what, 55 experience per turn. It's nothing. 100 experience will be next to nothing. I suggest they add the minimal replenishment to it. There's a mix of uh, uh, ex experience and replenishment, and this would make the factions that lack replenishment hero uh, uh, at least has a ever alternative. Some of the fourth uh, towers, like the cannon tower scorn, seem to do way higher damage than shown, possibly hitting the same entity multiple times with projectile collision. Sometimes it seems like hero can get two shot on ultra unit size. Yeah, uh, this seems like those luminar shots where you get hit by a projectile and explosion and both dealing the, the same damage leading to like double to triple damage. There's something with the pro uh, projectile collision. That's why sometimes luminar does ridiculous damage. We had one time, uh, it was a clip, luminar uh, fired its laser and the laser has dragged uh, uh, on the ground, dragged the ground. It's like it uh, didn't explode. It just dragged along the ground, hit everything on the ground, and then still hit its target and exploded all at the same time. It was like a fucking nuke went, on, went off. Everything in that line just got evaporated. That's like how Luminac should be, right? But I don't think this is intentional that uh, even the cannon, the towers hit the, the characters multiple times like that. I mean, there is a clip. Uh, there is a clip, I think. Uh, I may, may be able to find it. Has somebody uh, knows, has a link to that clip, maybe? Maybe is there a command? Mm, well, shit, can't find it on Twitch. Twitch has a useless clip search. Let me see that third party pro uh, website is much better search than Twitch. Uh, oh, oh, hold on, guys. It's loading. Why would Twitch have something as useful as uh, as this? thing is this one.
Uh, the Exalted Minutes have uh, Charmed, which lower the enemy attack, which is with their defense, really hot shit. This is the sign. You notice how I'm uh, distracted talking Sirens. about all the shit. What in the sh- yeah, This looks like regular damage to you. Shit! That shit is so off. Is either damage is too high or there's uh, there some kind of collision hits there or that is off. Oh Thank you, Daria. Have you seen that shit? Holy shit. 1.1 win uh, next month. Next month. Imperial Embassy landmark in Kislev uh, does too little and too late. A tier 4 and 5 landmark is in a such a city where building slots are very precious for other buildings. Possibly the worst landmark I've ever seen. Yeah, that's just uh, trash. That city has 4 landmarks and it has a such a shit landmark. It gives you relations with the Empire and gives you uh, legion points with the Empire and it's not even a lot of legion points. It's like, like uh, so low that it might not even work. Because of the breaking points. Possible breaking points. By the time you get kids of tier 4, you'll only be working with all the Empire. Or they're all gonna be dead. Uh, going into Tree of Souls since I can't still crash the game, go uh, for the first time in 8-3 hours. That was the first crash. Second crash occurred, uh, occurred the clicking on a sea treasure when they start the bell. Two crashes so far, boys. We got a crash counter. Exclamation mark CC. The Warhammer 3 is crashed two times. I think considering the amount of hours we have, uh, which is uh, 270 hours, that's for a C game, that is fucking amazing. No safe corruption yet, and uh, we've been hearing about them. That'll be, uh, that'll be devastating, probably. All demonic characters, both laws and heroes, should have that base missile resistance that nearly every character gets 15%. What's the point of being a demon and get that 20% of physical resistance missile resistance move? Yeah, that's uh, absolutely pointless. And then they added magic attacks on a lot of extra stuff as well. So you can deal with those, you know, big bad demons, because, you know, God forbid uh, demons be strong. Demons just simply melt to projectiles, and if they're magic, it's just fucked. You can see uh, those towers probably be magic as well. Having multiple heroes with the same build in the army, uh, example, uh, increase mobility should uh, use the value of the highest ones not, and not switch between them. I think the switch happens uh, uh, when uh, you are uh, ranking up the hero. So let's say I have a max ranked up hero with 25% uh, mobility. If uh, you uh, rank up a hero with a low rank, uh, it will switch to his increased mobility instead. Unholy manifestations, some are pretty poor, duration, cooldown, or scope of it. A little more than one charge on cooldown, uh, like two charges of the first Lanation 1 for every fifth turn, turns. Second Lanation 1 is very weak and it should be four or five times its uh, dead. Well, uh, so far, at least the Lanation 1s have been f pretty, uh, f very underwhelming considering uh, what you have to get to unlock them. And the fact the campaign doesn't want you to expand, uh, this should be way more rewarding to unlock. What's your opinion on uh, all of the magic resistance chain? Things have been very good. Spell resistance maybe should be a little bit higher uh, in general, uh, but uh, it, it made magic attacks good. Magic attacks were a detriment uh, uh, most times in the past, like Warhammer 2.
Like primary example of Vurzak gives the whole army magic attacks, but the dwarves have 25 magic resistance. Now it feels strong to get magic attacks, especially if you're going to be fighting demons. Three games later, we still can respect character skills, for fuck's sake. Three games later, they just don't care, it seems. They are leaving this one for the modders. What can you do? Some legendary lords like Catherine and Boris have magic attacks, and then again, their unique weapons have add magical attacks, instead of adding something else or more. Also, Boris's weapon has no damage like Catherine one has, plus weapon strength percentage, and Boris can use it more. See, it can even be consistent with creating generic, boring, stat unique weapons. Dot, dot, dot. Reach. The spell resistance uh, uh, now is against magic, uh, and the magical attacks ignore physical resistance. That's how it works now. In the past, the magical attacks were resisted uh, by magic resistance. Which made the magical attacks weak. And it's supposed to be something special. Okay, we move this one. Shattering units on the battlefield should take double damage to Shatter Debuff. Chasing single entities and some other uh, with various units looks horrible. Uh, it's been a problem for years. I think after all these years, uh, they would have done this. A respect could be a good, uh, good gold thing in the game. Of course, uh, uh, certain abilities should not be uh, allowed to reset skills. Like if it's unlocked uh, and it's granting something, uh, something uh, 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 game changing, uh, that those ones should not be able to be respect. Everything else could be, should be able to be respect. Uh, the unique weapons are uh, uh, from the quests, or uh, they are just acquired uh, just by getting a rank. They are just available to the characters that unlocks them. When army using march saints get ambushed, they shouldn't try to flee the ambush battle and instead and instead stand and fight, because the army is destroyed at the end of the battle anyways, since they were marching. See this logic here with the CA guys. They create the new ambush thing, and they make the AI trying to escape the battle. But they were caught marching, and no matter if they escape or not, they are dead. You see this thing here? They don't even uh, know the rules of their own game. It makes sense for ogres to flee ambush uh, battle if not marching. It doesn't make sense for Nurgle to flee in any case since they are so slow. So yeah, that should be a thing. Ogres fleeing, that's very good. This can be effective, especially if they're outnumbered. But Nurgle flink, what the fuck up is up, up with that? How, how the fuck is Nurgle gonna escape a uh, English battle? Sometimes some provinces don't give notification that there is building upgrade available. Even if it's turned on in notification, all sometimes happens to load and hear notifications. Yeah, the uh, the notifications in the game are now bugged, and it's taking away some of the quality of life in the game, adding tedium, especially uh, uh, you know when you have to check it all the time. This has been uh, pretty much number one uh, time time sync in the current Sunesh campaign because it's such a it's a late game. Very often, large units are getting nearly permanently stuck around the destroyed chariots or artillery piece lying around the battlefield. Yeah. We made a battle where we actually tried to use that in our advantage, and we won the battle because of it. We deployed the chariots on every side of the city when the enemy was entering the city, and the chariots would create uh, unmovable obstacles, and uh, most of the large units, even infantry, would take, uh, be very hard to enter the city, and some of them got stuck, and gave us enough time to build towers and win the battle. In settlement defense, there's always that one missing unit that for some reason has skirmish mode turned on, leading to hectic situations. The false skirmish mode is off in the settings, yeah, that's as well. 
Slanesh cold buildings cost too much and I don't do enough relevant stuff. Like Axis Call then it pays off in 50 turns. A lot of benefits from it rarely useful. To do Slanesh campaign uh, skill slaves to access might not do anything at all. Lords uh, with it or without it gaining gaining same uh, percentage of the voters. Yeah, that skill is uh, bugged. I've, I've confirmed this on uh, multiple times. Requesting army from allies uh, uh, with battle wizard will I'll use available capacity for frost maidens. Quality of life. Okay. Uh, this is the uh, big copium, copium that uh, will be added uh, at one point in the. In the uh... Okay, I think uh, the respect should be under quality of life. Hmm. Alt of life. Game needs notification for armies hiding in ambush tents that have full moon range. So you're not gonna get notified by this. Happens to me sometimes I miss the ambushing army for two or three turns, especially when you have to manage seven plus armies. So if you put an army in an ambush stance and uh, uh, nothing happens this turn on the AI side, the next turn you will not be notified this army is uh, not been moved. So they just stay in ambush stance. And sometimes uh, that will be a couple of turns wasted. So there should be a notification for armies in ambush stance on full moon range. Uh, 200 quality of life under building up the option where the demolish icon is, we could use another button icon where we could turn off this building ask when upgrade is available to make it more convenient to play with building notifications. Instead of always skipping them because some buildings are not worth upgrading. What's worse, if you skip them before a battle, game forgets you skip them and asks again. Gets tedious with large empires as well. That'll be a big quality of life because you don't really upgrade everything. Why would you upgrade a, a big walls in every settlement, right, for example? Sometimes tier 3 walls are more than enough. So, sometimes you want to use that money for something else. Or, uh, why would you upgrade a cathedral or a, or a bell wizard building with, uh, with the Empire beyond one? Those are some of the worst buildings in the game. And you're just going to get tedious, uh, uh, constant, constant ass. Notification is supposed to give you quality of life, not create tedium. Global pool, items and ancillaries game should remember our setting. Only show equipped items that are sorting and not reset all the time. Uh, missions should track progress, not just show what you need to do. And yeah. Three games later, we still can inspect character skills or at least let the Confederate Lords and uh, Heroes reset all their points. So they might be usable and not just disbanded and replaced. There's, a, there's an UI bug on character inventory where uh, you can click on the side 
in some side the right of your equipment and it will sometimes unequip characters armor oh my bad is this their english but these guys are americans unequip is it 2p Unequip, Anik, ah, oh, nice missing you. Okay, so this is a month later. Uh, the, this website is uh, is American, at least American English. So under bugs, uh, there's 22. There's way more than this. Just like. Psh. Under issues, features, and oversights, there is 28, and quality life, there is 5. 55 entries in the book of garages, book of bugs. 55. I'm uh, not going to be giving this to anybody, guys, so you guys, everybody has access to this. If you think that uh, this is not going to be received by anybody, you can always just send it to somebody. But I'm saying, you know, if you put it somewhere, I don't mind. So I'm just doing this for myself. I don't want to communicate with CA, I'm just going to get brain damage. They don't, they don't really care, they just pretend. Okay, um... Too stressed to play the game right now, guys. All this shit uh, raises my blood pressure. Uh, I'll see you guys uh, uh, next time when I see you. So this is gonna be the stream for uh, tonight. Uh, we'll be continuing the Pain the World Pink uh, when I get back. Probably we might be back later. Who knows? My sh sleep schedule is fucked.